First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. State of human concerns and existence, and a definite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Radio. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs> Peace, peace, back once again with Dr. Aileen Baylor Radio. All right, begin right, bring up my co-host, Brother Fahim. Are you here, brother? Uh, I'll tell you, watch it east, more. Yeah, I'll tell you, watch it east, more. What's up with you? Uh, I'm doing well, well. How the more doing? I'm doing well, God. Right. Um, I'm looking for Brother Penning's number here, and um, I don't see it right now, so we're going to try to get in contact with him. Um, Brother Penn, if you're listening, um, hit that number one button. We're going to bring you on in. Um, let's see here. Um, hold on, I, because there's a lot of static in the background. All right. All right. So, let's see what's on. All right, let's see what's on here. Uh, just bear with us for a moment. Let's see if we can pull them on up. Um, I think that's area code 347. Um, Brother Panic, is that you? All right, must not be. Um, what we're going to do is um, Bill. Um, until we can um, see if Penny's going to um, hit me back and come on on. This week we're supposed to be talking about the Kabbalah, the Goetia, the Tunnels of 22 of Set, um, which is the backside of the Tree of Life, as well as also on the Tree of Life. So what we're going to do is trying to keep it popping. Um, for those that don't know about the Tree of Life, of course, um, you can go and do your research. The origin of it comes from ancient Egypt, in which that if you read volume one of Egyptian yoga by Dr. Muad the Ashby, he has the actual picture of a hieroglyph or metuneta of the walls in which that breaks that information down and show um, two um, Tamerians or Egyptians, Kemites or Kamals, in which that are holding the tree of life in which that is symbolically, um, of course, your chakras, 
um, in particular the seven coming up the, um, you know, coming up the back and then the three um, in the front where you store energy. Um, in particular, the three in the front of which they store energy is called the Dantians. You have the upper Dantian, which is known within the book of um, Acts, where Jesus came down to his disciples and blew the Holy Spirit or his breath upon the disciples, and they received the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit and the breath became synonymous. Um, and also the fact is, is that he was in the upper room when he did it, which is actually symbolic to the third eye or what is known as the first eye, in which that um, when you practice um, the art such as Qigong or Tai Chi, you store energy as you're pulling it down, descending energy into your antennas, which your hair follicles down into your scalp, into your um, third eye area, which is in, located near the third ventricle, um, overseas the third ventricle. Um, that is the storage place of this electromagnetic energy known as prana within the Sanskrit, chi within China, ki within Japan, um, kahuna mana within Hawaii, or the Holy Spirit within Christianity. Now, that is one of the first places that you store the energy at. Another place is the heart chakra, in particular back of the heart that expands the front of the heart, in which that you also store the energy there. And then, of course, your dantian, which is the lower dantian in particular, um, is located in your navel chakra, um, in which that expands um, two inches down and back behind um, your navel chakra. So when we're talking about this type of information, um, that is symbolic to the ten um, spheres or fears, which is talking about the ten lights on the tree of life coming from Keitha down to Kork. Um, That's actually what they're talking about in that relationship. Once again, the seven chakras coming up the back of the spine, which is mentioned in the book of Revelation, where it speaks about the fact that um, the seven churches, the seven churches or the seven seals, that is nothing more than the seven um, chakras or seats of lights in which that resonate from the base of the um, spine, which is known as your sacral bone, um, to the back of where the kidneys are in the center between the kidneys, up then from um, where the solar plex, the back area of the solar plex actually is symbolic to your pancreas, spleen area, then up from, you know, the back of the heart, then you have the back of the throat, um, the medulla oblongata, which correlates to the third eye in the front, and then, of course, the crown. So um, when you read in the book of Revelations, it speaks about specifically about a book in which that was sealed um, with seven seals, you know, on the back, you know, um, that is symbolic to the backbone. Um, metaphysically, you got 33 vertebrates in which that correlates to Jesus dying at the age of 33, um, correlates to um, also to Alexander, the so-called um, fake or, you know, great, they, you know, I call it fake, you know, in which that supposedly died at the age of 33 or so, in which that the Serapis myth is actually based on portion of that, as well as also J.C., which was Julius Caesar, um, coming from the Pisos uh, renditions. Um, if you don't know who the Pisos are, Pisos, go and check out the Roman aristocratic family known as the Pisos and, um, and how they get down and how they made the mythology up, um, you know, their family line of the Old and New Testament um, of the so-called Jewish converts. Actually, um, we talk about these Khazars or Ashkenazans, you know, um, coming from the Gentiles, in which that converted, you know, to um, what is known as Hebrewism or the Israelite teachings, in which that they claim that they were the followers of the, you know, of Judah or Judea, you know, in which that, you know, you get the word Jews from and which that they claim is broken down. Um, actually, um, Huda or Judea is actually derived from the word Tahudi or Jehudi. And Tahudi or Jehudi is the God of wisdom, which symbolizes um, not you know, a tribe, 
but particular teachings in which that came out from the ancient mystery school system in which that they claim that they follow, which are the seven principles. Um, those seven principles deals with mentalism, um, which is um, dealing with correspondence, polarity, rhythm, vibration, gender, which is sex, and polarity, all right, um, cause and effect, all right? So those are the seven principles in which that are the principles of Jahudi or Tahudi in which that they claim that they follow. Um, this is why when you do any research, you find out that um, you have these imposter Jews in which that claim the lineage, you know, um, coming from the teachings of Tahudi, but they themselves are not actually um, practicing um, the ancient mystery school, except in the sense of them claiming to be the chosen people, which of course we know that's a lie because even when you read the Bible, um, all of the, you know, so-called descriptions of the Jews, Hebrews, or Israelites were people of color, hence, i.e., black, you know, or Moors, you know. So, you know, that was um, BS. Um, and they are nothing more than converts who came in around 740 um, A.D., you know. Some say even earlier, around 70 um, um, B.C., um, after the burning of Jerusalem, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, we see that if you read the book, The 13th Tribes, by um, Arthur Kessler, um, he speaks about they're nothing more than Khazars or Russian converts, all right, with strands of Mongolian um, coming from out of, you know, uh, the East, you know, um, did not come from out of Africa, you know, in which that came from out the Falashians or the Dunglawai, um, who was known as the Dunglawai. Um, people from out of Sudan, Nubia, um, as it was called, Ethiopia, uh, also Abyssinia, Somalia area. Um, names have changed, of course, over the years, but we're talking about Kushite people. And, of course, the Falashians are um, part of the Kushite people, as well as you and I. So we are the original um, students of the teachings of Jahudi. All right, which was part of the ancient mystery school in which that spread it throughout the world. And if you don't believe me, get the book called African Origin of Civilization by Shakant Dior, in which that he specifically stated that around 500 BC, you had motion of priests from out of the ancient mystery school who went and spread it out from Africa into the diaspora, um, into China, into um, various parts of Asia into Europe, into the Americas, and he brought with them the ancient mystery school system. Um, this is why when you read Stolen Legacy by George G. James, he states specifically that um, for those who came up into Europe, the Moors were the custodians of the ancient mystery school um, teachings. Um, you read that in his book. Um, and as they, of course, spread it out, you know, these teachings, you know, went throughout the world. So it's the same mystery school. This is why you find pyramids and mounds throughout the world. They recently found pyramids in Romania. They found pyramids, of course, in China. They found pyramids in Australia. They found pyramids in um, Madagascar. They found pyramids throughout Africa, all the way down and actually into Zimbabwe, which was formerly known as Rhodesia, which of course, was named after Cecil Rose, who ended up killing 25 million Africans. Um, you find, you know, not just, matter of fact, when my wife and I went to the British Museum about six years ago, what happened was is that we had, my wife was looking at one of the objects, one of the, you know, Egyptian relics, and she touched it, and she put her head inside, and she said when she put her head inside, she started chanting Om. She said her mind went into um, another um, apparent reality, in which that she saw the ancient Egyptians. And the curator of the museum came over, uh, one of the curators, and said, oh, man, we can't touch the objects. And, of course, my wife said, well, it's been so long since I've touched my ancient relics. And, you know, came back about five minutes later and said, well, ma'am, if you know, if you think you are impressed by the rugs that we have here in the British Museum, in which that he also told us that 80% of 
more information of Egypt. Information was down in the basement in which that the head curator of the British Museum at that time was not there. Um, so we asked, could we um, get a chance to see? He said that the head curator was not there. Um, however, he did tell us um, that only what we were seeing was 20%, the other 80% was underneath. And he also said that if you want to see more, we need to go to Ireland. So when we hear about St. Patrick running the snakes out of Ireland, we understand that the snakes was not reptilians like David Icke um, would have you to believe. Um, the snakes were like what Mark Pinkham, or Maru Pinkham wrote within the return of the serpents of wisdom that it symbolized those who mastered the Kundalini energy. These was the so-called blacks of Moors who mastered the Kundalini energy who was ran out of Ireland by St. Patrick in which that did get St. Patrick's Day from. Um, and when you read this, you can actually get this from a book, um, actually two volumes from Ancient and Modern Britons by, um, what's his name? His name is David Matt Ritchie. All right, David Matt Ritchie. Um, and there he states this. And so the snakes are actually those who master the reptilian or serpentine fire energy, um, which mastered also um, the reptilian portion of the brain, which has 12 sites or melanin centers on the reptilian portion or brain stem, in which that is activated in most um, so-called blacks or moors. Um, it is only at two sites activated, and this is based on neutricized by um, a brother by the name of um, Dr. Leila Africa. Um, he wrote that in the Nutricize book, and we said he also have profound information in African um, holistic health too. So I recommend that book too. Um, and we said he drops on the signs of melanin. Now, of course, we know um, the head man who bought the melanin um, sciences. We know that the ISIS papers bought fractions of it through Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, but the one who um, popularized the melanin information and subject was not just Anthony T. Broder through his 22 essays or the Broder, um, or the Broder files, um, but also um, his contemporary during that time was uh, Dr. Richard King, who wrote the African origin of biological psychiatry as well as also Melanin and Key to Freedom, in which that um, these melanin centers um, are activated. Now, what the GMO food is doing is shutting down the melanin um, activation in these particular sites in the reptilian portion of the brain, as well as also sent down the electromagnetic currency and the DNA, um, which within the brain you have 12 pair of cranial nerves in which that sits around the pineal gland, in which that deals with the activation of taking you into higher sensory perception of what's called ESP. For example, if you have um, touch, then the higher perception would be psychemistry. If you have sight, then you have clairvoyance. If you have hearing, then you have clairaudience. If you have um, smell, then you have clear sentience. If you have um, taste, then you have clear gaskins. So these are the higher aspects of those five senses. And these, when these 12 pair of cranial nerves and the 12 um, sites in the, you know, in the um, reptilian portion of the brain are activated, then you have the ability in order to communicate with your ancestors. All right, this is um, a large thing, a big portion of the information which that brother panic breaks down is how to communicate with the ancestors. And this is what actually is taking place scientifically, you know, medically in your physical body. Also awakening up the DNA, which is nothing more than layers of consciousness and information, a memory um, in which that is the storehouse of not just this um, particular incarnation of you here, but of your ancestors who have passed on, seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side. So 14 generations, you are a concentration of. So you have direct access to those memory banks of your ancestors right now, um, in which that this is the reason why they shut down your DNA to function below 10%, and the other 90% of your DNA is non-coded, which means inactive. All right, this is what the GMO food is doing is shutting that shit down and attempting to anyway. Um, the overall ruler of everything in which we talk about, however, is your consciousness, all right? And in order to transfer from um, lower consciousness or lower nature or lower mind or lower self 
is by way of your breath, all right? Um, your breath is what is the medium in which that transfers um, you from out of your devilishment into your godliness, as we would say. So in order to tap into your higher self, you must learn how to breathe. All right, this is what is meant um, in the scriptures where Jesus speaks about the fact that, you know, uh, that he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can get to the Father but by him. All right? So it's through the breath. Within the ancient comedic teachings, the breath is shu, all right, which means the personification of air or he who raises up, all right? The breath is what raises the kundalini, which is the all sentient um, energy, um, known as Isis, all right? Raises this energy up. Also within Hebrew is known as the Shekinah. Within ancient Kemet um, teachings, um, Isis is also, which is all set, she's also known as Sekhmat, all right? Um, all of this is nothing more than the kundalini the feminine face of God. And as you raise that energy up, also known as the Holy Spirit or the Holy Mother Mary. And as um, when you see, this is why in over 200 countries, you have the Black Madonna and, um, Black Madonna and Child, which is nothing more than the Kundalini as she raises up um, that divine seed, which is that um, atom um, in which that, you know, uh, or, that's, or those atoms in which that transformed to molecules in which that became um, DNA or cells, um, through um, which formed your physical body into existence, these eight blastular pores or what is known as specifically um, um, cellular division, in which that is there within your um, base of your spine called your sacral, no, um, sacral bone area, which is right above the crack of your ass, which is the abode of the Kundalini. Now, what happens is that upon the raising of the Kundalini, it raises up also that particular um, cell in which that never changes your whole life, all right? So you are made up of 76 trillion cells, but there's eight cells in your body that never change the whole life. The other 76 trillion cells changes over the seven-year period, but these cells never change. So this is drawn up through the proper resurrection of Christ, which is the raising of the Kundalini, in which that um, produces the divine marriage in heaven, in which that the Kundalini touches the pineal gland, in which that electrifies and magnifies and awakens, as we would say, um, Heru. The soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland based on the chorus of French philosopher, which is the seat of the soul, as well as also based on the Gnostic teachings told to us by Dr. Richard King and also to Brother Bobby Hemi and also by way of um, Brother Panic. All right, so with the activation of the seat of the soul, the soul becomes awakened and transformed from Osar, who is the Lord of um, the dead or the Lord of the underworld, which is the subconscious realm, to become Heru, which is the God of the conscious world. So now um, Osar transforms into Heru, and now uh, that is Christ consciousness within Christianity. That is Buddha consciousness in Buddhism. Uh, that is the way within uh, Taoism, which is Tao. Um, we can go on and on and on. That is a batala, you know, or Odo do madre, as a batala symbolizes the head. And then the awakened portion is ori, um, in which that um, correlates in a sense to um, Odo do madre, which is the universal principle. And being that um, you are the microcosm of the macrocosmic, which is the universe. You are the universe in miniature form. Um, it symbolizes the mind expanding the whole 76 quint, um, quintillion miles of diameter of which is called the universe, right, where your mind spans the exact proportions. So, therefore, you have access to all of that information. Uh, we refer to it as the Akashic Records or um, Ethers or also refer to the Universal Library. Right? You have access to all that information regardless. So this is what we're um, talking about here, and um, this is some very advanced science. So hopefully y'all niggas are listening to what the fuck I'm talking about so that y'all can get a clear understanding, overstanding, understanding of your physical body being the antenna in which that you must use in order to resurrect yourself, all right? Um, some of y'all niggas want to learn about the science of magic but don't know how to harness energy. That's a no-no, all right, to do magic. Well, you got to learn how to harness energy, right? In other words, your mind must be um, turned on 
consciously to absorb prana, chi, or ki energy, all right, which is raw. You must be able to draw down raw, all right? Um, this is why raw being drawn down um, within the Santanic Bible um, is the name for the devil, all right? Um, this is no coincidence that raw, you know, which is prana, is the color red, all right? So when you fucking with this information, you actually is messing with Lucifer, all right, which is um, the devil, which is in red, and which that symbolizes what um, brings forth the manifestation of the physical body, all right? Um, if you want longevity, then you will store that red energy into your lower dantian, which is your navel chakra, all right, and which that give you immortality or longevity as we refer to it as, all right? So this is really what you're messing with, all right? So if you want to become a great healer, you must learn the components of um, the science of drawing down this energy into you. 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. I'm giving you a metaphor, not to get spooked the fuck out. All right? This ain't about getting spooked out. Some of y'all spooky niggas, you know what I'm saying? You might want to leave the line right about now. All right? But this is talking about science. All right? You can look at a goddamn firefly, and you can look this information up. You will see that it... Um, that what lights up a firefly is called luciferin, all right? That's how it's able to harness, it's able to harness the light. You must learn how to do that shit for you can light the fuck up. This is for real, all right? Now, if you don't want to know how to do that, then once again, get the fuck off the line. If you do want to learn it, keep your ass on, and I'll tell you the secret, all right? The secret is... Simply being conscious and learning the science of breath. When you breathe in, you will actually feel prana coming down at the top of your head. You will store it once again in the areas that I said earlier. All right? Then you must learn the science of the micro and the macro cosmic orbit technique, which is the circulation of that energy through the body. It would be well that you learn that so that you can expand that information or that energy or messenger codes through your meridians, all right? You have um, 72,000 nerves, as they say. And what happens is that when you send this information through your nadis, um, which is actually through um, your whole body, various areas, from, the head to, um, from your head to your hands, arms, legs, down to your torso, um, you know, up to your torso, whatever the case is, um, your whole body, all right, it lights up like a Christmas tree or whatever, as we say, it expands your aura, all right? There's a breath technique in which that we talked about before in which that is called empty retention. You have three, prana breathing or prana breath technique. There's three. Empty retention is one, six, three, six, um, three is one, seven, one, seven, one is another one, all right? These are the... um actually makes on which that we recommend that y'all get into. All right? It expands your aura. The average person aura is only three feet outside of their physical body. You have your um, outer aura, your health aura, and your inner aura. What happened is that um, based on um, particular thought forms coming from yourself, resonating from yourself, in other words, self-defeating um, thoughts, or whether it's coming from, you know, um, someone else, who's bombarding you with negative thought forms, what happens is that these negative thought forms can actually eat away at your auric field and create holes and leaks. So in order to seal up the holes and leaks, you must learn these breathing techniques and also how to cleanse your aura. All right? You can actually take an egg and, you know, move it down from around your head, around the front, down your legs and feet, um, down um as much of the back that you can get, and then what you would do is throw the egg outside, you know, and uh, make sure that it's cracked. And that's one of the ways you know to move, remove negative energy. You can also take a sea salt bath with um, Himalayan salt um, or sea salt or Epsom salt or whatever the case is, and soak for at least 20 minutes, you know, which that helps purify the auric fill. All right, or you can learn pranic healing, in which that deals with um, scraping negative debris, you know, um, or congestion, negative congestion, you know, um, from off of your auric fill and then flicking it off into a plant 
or grass or a tree. You know, this is where, you know, your tree hugger niggas come in at, you know, in which that when you hug a tree, the energy can pass off, you know, from you into the tree itself. You know, um, if you ask permission, of course, because remember, the tree gives off oxygen. You take in oxygen. You give off carbon dioxide. It takes in carbon dioxide. So it's a bi-symbiotic influence between the two of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, get into um, some tree hugging niggas, um, you know, that will help y'all, you know, immensely with the resurrection, you know, of um, of and the cleansing of your aura, you know, which helps with the removal of guilt and disappointment and frustrations from your chakra system, which are known as the seven creative spirits, also referred to as the seven Elohim, or the seven souls of Ra within the ancient comedic t- um, um, teachings, all right? Um, so um, with this cleansing, you know, we're talking about, you know, the resurrection, the purification of your aura, and this is what the tree of life actually is talking about. The tree of life, once again, is your whole physical body. When you read in the Bible, it talks about the book of life, It's talking about your physical body, you know what I'm saying? Um, Your DNA has light codes, in which that deals with ACGT, which is um, adenine, um, cytosine, um, also known as um, tyrosine and guanine, all right? Those four amino acids symbolizes the building blocks of life called protein, in which that forms your physical body together from those eight dividing cells of mitosis, all right? and that's how the various areas of your body, the main function of that process in which that holds your physical body together is called centrifugal and centripetal force, which is nothing more than the insulation and the exhalation of the breath itself. When you was inside the womb of your mother, you, was learn, you learned how to breathe through the pores of your skin. All right, so for nine months, that's what you were, what they call an aquatic being, because you was in water, the waters of life, all right? And that water of life symbolized, you know, um, also what is spoken of within the Bible. It speaks about the waters of life. Um, what they don't tell you is that how that shit it really happens. All right? Number one, the breath not only composes and holds your physical body together, and you don't believe me, goddamn it, stop breathing and see your ass decompose. So the breath is what holds your ass together. That is the shoe, all right? Or in the ancient comedic. Um, teaching that's shu, which is the personification of air. Within the Hebrew or, um, or um, Aramaic, it is Yahshua. That's why you see Yahshua, who's the new God, um, which is a byproduct of the old God of Yahweh. Uh, you have Yahweh, which is Yahivahi, which is the Tetragrammaton, which is nothing more than, you know, those um, four letters that I told you about, in which that is called the building blocks of life, A-C-G-T. That is nothing more than Yahivahi, which comes up to the number 26, which 2 plus 6 is the number 8, which is talking about the 8 divided cells of mitosis that I just told you about. It's no coincidence that if you broke down, um, if you had um, the 26 letters of the alphabet, all right, in our English alphabet, you have 26 letters, 2 plus 6 is 8 once again. Then you have L, it breaks down to 8. Adonai breaks down to 8. Elah, which is the same word as Allah, breaks down to eight. Elohim breaks down to eight. The names in which that you use within Hebrew for God all breaks down to the number eight, which symbolizes the eight divided cells of mitosis. In ancient comedic texts, it breaks down to um, what is known as um, the Agadad, all right, which are the um, eight gods who emerge from Atum, all right. In which that symbolizes Shu, Tefnut, Geb, Nut, or Saw, or Set, Set, and Nabat. All right. So this um, um, signifies it is already part of you. So when you can call it nothing but aspects of yourself. This is what Bob's telling y'all niggas for years now. This is really about what I'm doing is helping you, you know, get the clear understanding. And understanding of what all of this really means in the past. Because some of y'all are missing the damn book for real. All right? This is about you, your soul salvation. We ain't talking about some damn um, um, spooky shit once again. Or just worshiping something outside of yourself. We done had enough of that shit. 
or we done had enough of worshiping something outside of us, outside of you. That's that's some idol worshiping shit. That's when you actually are the antichrist. When you damn waste all your energy on something outside of yourself that you can't see, touch, taste, smell, and hear, but yet you have a goddamn God in you. First Corinthians three sixteen it speaks about. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the living God? So if your body is the temple of God, then God is in you. Luke seventeen twenty one tells you that Jesus um told his disciples, he said, Yo, look here, no therefore behold the kingdom of God is within you. So if you want to learn magic, the only time you can learn magic is once you harness the God properties within yourself. All right? So once again, with these sciences, um, you must resurrect um, um, that atomic um, cellular structure, all right, um, like we was talking about, which is already at the base of the spine, resurrect that, pull that up. As a matter of fact, um, like we said last week, um, there's 72,000, you know, nadis, um in the body, but there's also 72 um, principles around what is called the kunta gland which is actually um, near the base of the spine, which actually is like what we call the prostate gland within the males or the kunta gland um, within the woman, all right? That is where that energy is, all right? This is where you get the mythology about um, the golden um, egg um, laid by the goat, by the, um, by the goose, the goose and the golden egg. Or when you get into uh, the Gnostic text and it speaks about um, this egg of life. All of this is talking about that particular kunta egg, which is right there at the base of the spine or in the pit of the stomach area. And it's from there in which that you raise um, this energy up called the kuntalini, right, which is the serpentine fire. This is the serpent in the garden in which that your niggas have been so scared about. Right? Um, the garden being your physical body itself. And as you uh, remember, it tells you that the serpent was the most subtle um, um, subtle creature in the garden. This is what the Bible says in, in the Old Testament in Genesis. So this creature, this serpent, is the most subtle, all right? And subtle, when you break it down, um, correlates to the fact of subtle energy, all right? And this subtle energy um, is what is called prana kundalini, which is meaning that kundalini is nothing more than a concentration of the universal life force energy, which is called prana, all right? You have your own personal prana in which that give you the ability in order to live a certain amount of years, but you can actually expand that personal energy by the practice of qigong, by the practice of tai chi, by the practice of reiki, by the practice of pranic healing, by the practice of kundalini yoga, or by the practice of tantra kriya yoga or tantra yoga, all right? So you can actually... Um, expand um, your energy through the proper um, by by these proper techniques. All right, you ain't gonna get that shit by um, just going to church every Sunday and just jumping up and down and foaming at the goddamn mouth and falling out. That ain't gonna happen because the whole fact of you falling out from the Holy Spirit shows that you ain't harnessed that energy. You get the burst of that energy right then, and then you can't even harness and keep that energy going. And so you fall out weak. Someone got to help your ass back to the damn um, pew, all of that shit. Go to church and see that. You see what I'm talking about. Go to a, whole, um, a holy holy church, Pentecostal holiness church. You see exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Um, that's just that's just like um, you know, you know people who practice the um, African religions, and after the spirit lays on them. You know, they tired, they weak, they got to go lay down for about a day or two and shit. Okay? Nah. Nah. That shit don't happen when you um, know how to um, activate this energy through your meridians. You know, so this is what we're really talking about here. Let me go. Um, you got something to add on to what I'm talking about here, brother? Oh, yeah, but, uh, brother, yeah, uh they, they, they don't deal with the higher self as the God within. Uh, they don't, the, the, the Holy Spirit is within them, but they don't deal with that. And if you come to, to them with that, they really act like they don't really understand or don't want to understand because 
uh, they are so clinging on to this, uh, whatever this Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, uh, what they have in church, that they hold on so dear to. And you, they're, they're so uh, wrapped up in it. It's hard to really get, you know, get that through their heads. You know, uh, they tell me, well, my uh, grandfather taught me that, and my father taught me that, and my mother taught me that, so that's what I believe in. And that's what they go by. Right, right, right. No doubt about that. No doubt about it. And um, so why you, why you think that's um, a fact? Is it just because of the upbringing or because um, they scared about self? Well, they, 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 the upbringing and, uh, uh, like I said before, uh, their, belief, their so-called belief and this belief system that they have won't won't allow them to grasp on to what you are talking about. It won't allow them to do that. And and uh uh they can't see that, you know. Uh you come to them something like uh to them may be foreign to them. But actually it's it, it what you talk what you're telling them they're looking for something that they already have. You know, they say, Oh I'm looking for Jesus right. or I'm looking I'm trying to find myself or I'm looking for God. I got to search for God. I need God. Well, you you already have all that, you know. You know, and you're constantly, as I said, they're constantly uh, howling, yelling, jumping up and down, screaming, falling out, passing out uh, in church. They got to be held back to the pews of their church and in, in their uh, in, in their church, and still haven't really got you know haven't have achieved a damn thing, you know. Right. But they say they're tired out. You know, right. One you know, day they all tired out, you know, because of that wasted energy that they're doing. Right, right. No doubt about that. And that correlates, too, to First Corinthians 12, chapter, where it speaks about the gifts of Christ or the, you know, the nine fruits of, you know, and one of them is the fact of being able to speak in tongues and then, you know, have the interpreter, you know, of those in which that speaks in tongues. What I've noticed is that they never have a damn interpreter in there to tell you what the hell um, the nigga is saying. No. Because it's all about mind control. Number one. Right. It's all about mind control. It's all about controlling their congregation. You know. Uh, the few <laughs> preachers know what, what the deal is, but they're not going to tell their congregation. If they do that, right. that would be no detrimental to them. You know, they, they can't, they can't, uh, can't feed off of them or suck off of them like they want to then. The game be over. Right. 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 Yeah. All right. So, uh, and so what we want to do now is go on. Um, we... Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, they can't get that money that they want to make. They can't, uh, you know, uh, 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 it takes a lot of bread out of their pockets. You know, it's, it's, uh, actually the church will fall if they embrace on what you and I are talking right, about. Right, right. That, 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 that's the end of the game. Right. The saw, Holy Roman Church in Rome, the no, Vatican, the gang is up. No doubt, no doubt. The fact that he said he's the big Christ, meaning that he's on earth, you know, until the real Christ. Well, damn it, you the real Christ. Exactly. You know, waiting for you to wake the fuck up, basically, you know, so that, you know, um, you know, he can put it into the foolishness in which that they done, you know, you know, created it over the last, you know, almost nearly 2,000 years. You know, that's exactly. the nonsense. Exactly. The whole world. You know, even the, um, if you go and do some, right, if you go and do some research, you're going to find out that the Coptic, um, so-called Coptic Christians who had Christianity 300 years before Catholicism, before the Catholic Church or the Vatican, mm -hmm. um, you will find out that um, they was related to the Falashian Hebrews in which that, um, you have the Kishite beliefs or priesthood, which was the Ethiopian priesthood in which that actually controlled ancient Kemet. You know, that, you know, the so called ancient mystery schools of Kemet was controlled by the Kushites. Mm -hmm. You know, so all this information, the word um, Christianity comes from the word Kurasani. The word Kurasani, the mummified body of Osiris, you know, mm -hmm. which is talking about the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland in which that you know, um, must be um, reawakened, whether it's mm -hmm. um, going to be here on earth or whether it happens, you know, on Judgment Day when your ass die. 
You exactly. know what I'm saying? You're going to have a pe- um, uh, um, panoramic, you know, in backwards rotation of your past life. That means from the point that you um, are dying, you know, um, all your past life, you know, your whole past life experience is seen before your eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, back to, you know, back to the point, you know, of when, um, you know, you was conceived, you know, and that's what really takes place, you know. And then, of course, you know, some speak about this tunnel, you know, and the end at the white light. That is nothing more than um, your soul going through uh, what is Therian cord or the silver cord, which is mentioned in the book of Ecclesiastics. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See, the Bible is built for something because some of these beliefs, you know what I'm saying, some of these sciences, you know, facts, you know, has already been written down. You know, and the Bible itself is a, nothing more than a summary of the traditions and the cultures of um of the um ancient people. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, so you know, majority of it, you know, is um based on African traditions. But the European got it, of course, in order to um you know the make his tales off of it in order to control um, certain aspects. You know, saying such as you know through slavery. You know, where um in the portion of those scriptures where it's talking about you know, for slaves to be obedient to your master, fuck that. Mm-hmm. You know that that is that is part of the information on which that um the European has used in order to you know get us to where we at right now. Exactly. You know, so you know that's that's some of the things in which that we have to. Um, come to consideration of. In other words, don't throw the baby out with the bath water, you know, get what you can from it, you know, and use it to your advantage. Like um, we was building the day about Psalms, the book of Psalms, you know, um, the whole 150 um, chapters of the book of Psalms, you know, was real powerful because that is nothing more than the hymns of Akhenaten, uh, Ankhaten, you know what I'm saying, who was Amenhotep IV, you know, of the 18th dynasty. You know, those was hymns, you know, and um, they had school properties to them, all right? If you get um, Annie Reva's um, books, um, The Power of Psalms, or the book by my wife and I called The Living Power of Psalms and The Art of Candle Magic, you know, you would see, you know what I'm saying, um, how potent these particular hymns are and the power that they possess, you know, because it all taps into the subconscious mind. You use these particular hymns for um, protection, for, um, you know, Controlling court cases, ending court cases, you know, um, to get rid of negativity around you, you know, whatever the case is, you know, this is what you can use these particular hymns for, you know, and this is all, you know, shown and proved through the fact that um, Wallace Budge believed that the ancient Egyptians um, produced spells or that these were particular spells on which that they wrote. And in a sense, of course, they were. You know, these are um, spells in which that dealt with the science of magic, which is nothing more than the subconscious mind. So as saying that, you also have the subconscious mind. You know, you have the conscious mind and then the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind deals with universe B, in which that symbolizes the back side of the tree of life, in which that is the tree of knowledge and good and evil, um, in which that um, also with the Goetia, as well as also with the 22 tunnels of Set, are located at. Um, if you look at the Tree of Life, you on the front side you have the 22 um, tunnels on which that connects um, the various um, ten spheres of life. You know, um, on the Tree of Life, in which that there's 22. All right, those 22 correlate to the 22 amino acids in which that um, are called the building blocks of life, or you know, in which that forms your physical body actually. All right, um, in which that evolved from out of those eight blastopores that we spoke about earlier, all right, or those four um, amino acids. So from the four amino acids came forth 22 um, amino acids, all right, in which that is part of, you know, um, the remainder is 42, put it that way, in which that equals 64, which are the 64 permutations of the DNA. Um, this is the 22 in which that are activated coding um, amino acids, you know, or a portion of the DNA, you know, which that you have access to right now. Um, the other 42 um, activations um, can be found in the Perhem Heru text, which is known as the Book of Common Forth by DNA or the opening of the ceremony 
uh, which is misnomer by um, Wallace Budge as the Book of the Dead, in which that it speaks about the 42 netters or netures, in which that is for, called the 42 gods, all right, of Mayat. And you can actually get the names of these 42 deities or gods or netters, in which that by pronouncing them every single day opens and awakens the remaining 42 um amino acids, which is called non-coding or junk DNA. So it activates the other remaining 90% of DNA in which that um, you are not using. The thing is, is that if you don't master um, these particular energies, you might scare the fuck out yourself. Okay? Seriously. You might just be so frightened, so frightened, you know, um, to everything is just the devil. All right. Um, we we don't seen that too many times, you know. Uh, you know, for those who used to watch Saturday Night Live, you know, you had a dude dressed up like the woman, old woman, and um, everything was Satan. Well, that's how y'all niggas would be, you know. what I'm saying if you don't eliminate some of that um, fear, you know, everything um, evolved from fear. You know, what I'm saying disappointment, frustration, lust, greed, envy, jealousy, all that shit is fear. Greed, you think somebody getting ready to take some shit from you. Jealousy, because uh, um, you think somebody getting ready to take some shit from you. Envy, because you think somebody getting ready to take some shit from you. All right, everything based on some, uh, you think that somebody going to take some shit from you. That's fear. All right, so we know fear um, broken down in the acronym is false evidence appearing real. All right, so the shit appears to be real, but it's not. So it's, that fear is merely an illusion. Right, and so the science is um you have to eliminate the fear factor before you start um indulging yourself into the higher forms of magic. You have low magic and have high magic. Low magic deals with you manipulating and controlling um the environment you know from the you know by opening the subconscious mind all right when you become one. Shit, you gain infinite consciousness because there's seven levels of consciousness. You have you have interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, consciousness, which is called life consciousness, subconsciousness, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. When you reach the level of infinite consciousness, which can actually be reached by the mastering of the breath itself, which is one breath per minute, meaning that you breathe in for 30 seconds and out for 30 seconds. That's one breath per minute. All right? If you was able to do that, then 100% usage of your brain will come online. You will be able to use 100% 100 usage of your brain. The pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus gland, thalamus gland, um, the temporal lobes, the uh, um, the amygdala glands, um, all these glands in your brain will be fully activated. DMT will come back online. Penaline will come online. All right? This is the thing telling you how to do this shit. We ain't fucking around and playing with you. We're telling you exactly how to do it. So by you mastering the breath um, technique, you'll be able to tap into um, these particular um, areas of your DNA in which that you can actually eliminate the fear factor from out of yourself so that as you awaken the DNA, which is the 90% of the DNA that you have not used or don't have access to right now because, like I said, you might – you might you know, drop dead from the shit that you see. That's what the back. That's what the go away shit is. That's what the backside of the tree of life is. That's what all of that is talking about. All right. If you ain't ready for it, don't fuck with it. All right. You know. In other words, if you learn how to master the breath, then you ain't got no fear. If you ain't mastering the breath, then I say fear that shit. Cause you ain't ready. All right, you ain't ready to see the memories, and you ain't ready to see the phobias and the fears in which that is latent um, in layers from your ancestors inside of your DNA. Remember, I just told you earlier that you all your ancestors concentrated seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side. Man thinks some wicked shit, and you got to eliminate all that shit that is encoded in your DNA. All right. In other words, to make your your heart lighter. If you ever see the scales on the ancient Egyptians, you would see um, an animal by their scales, 
Um, you see Tahuti. You see um, Isis, which is all set scales. The scales was called the scales of Mayat. All right. She symbolized the scales itself, which, of course, within astrology is Libra, which is balance. All right. But she symbolizes that scale. On there, you see a feather, and then you see the heart. You see the feather on the um, right-hand side, symbolic to um, the feather of Shu, which symbolizes the breath. And then you see the heart on the left-hand side. And if the heart is heavier than the feather, then you incarnate back here. There is no if, ands, or but. You're coming back to a fucking third-dimensional apparent reality. To get fucked all over again by some white folks. If your heart is lighter than a feather, then you can take your ass on into high dimension. Okay? The choice is yours. All right? So, um, we get ready to go to the um, phone lines here um, right quick. And um, we still don't see Brother Panics, but, um, you know, we're going to hold it down. You know, y'all getting some good information, so... You know, if you don't, you know, show up, you know, we're going to have him um, on next week or whenever he can get on here. But right now, we're going to go to the phone lines and see what y'all got to say. We got Eric call 817. Uh, hello? I was specifically calling to speak specifically to Brother Panic because I had tried to pay for his class, and I haven't received anything. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I tried calling him, like, him today myself, and I um, haven't been able to get in contact. So um, I'm going to try to email him after this and see what's going on with him. Hopefully um, he's all right and everything is um, okay with him, you know. Um, and, um, I don't know if you have his phone number or not. Um, what you can do is uh, try to email him or Facebook him. All right, we're going to go to the next call. We got area code 614. Area code 614, you're on the line. Greetings, um, King Ali, Aline and Brother L. King L, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay, excellent. L, how Great. How are you doing, Brother L? Fine, sister. How the sister doing tonight? I'm doing great. Well, I have a, a, a whole heap of questions, but I guess I want to just break it down to two. Okay, you said, uh, okay, so if, uh, do you see any correlation between, okay, the serpentine, uh, fire, kundalini energy, uh, snakes, and parasites? And, and what? And parasites? Parasite. They you know, they crawl on their belly, they're worm ish, worm like, serpentine like kind of right, right, or are they? Right. Well my wife brought that issue up um some shows ago in which that she dealt with that information. Um in which that um basically that's what also you can see in a correlation on the physical plane in terms of what is spoken of within the old testament about the so called serpent or worm or parasite in which that um tempts man. Um, you know, a woman in which that could be also, yes, parasites, um, in which that, of course, we know once they get inside your digestive system, um, they can actually produce chemicals in which that can cause all types of illnesses and diseases throughout your whole body. Um, it can cause high blood pressure, diabetes. Matter of fact, we know for sure that a fluke worm is a cause of diabetes, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, of course, in order to get rid of diabetes, there's a herb that you can use called bitter melon. Bitter melon. Um, to be used, to be of, um, to of diabetes and to cleanse out the body. There's other herbs such as black walnut, um, cloves, and garlic, right, um, and wormwood. Those four can get rid of um, any parasites, whether it's from the larva stage into the adult stage. So if it is a parasite, we just told you the herbs to use in order to get rid of them. So, you know, it ain't nothing, you know what I mean? So, so if it, so, it's co- it's connected to the kundalini serpent energy, yeah. or no? Right. That is, yes, that is no, not not the parasites, but the kundalini itself is called the serpentine fire. The serpentine fire is symbolic to what is called electricity or electromagnetism, okay. in which that you have um, the magnetism force of the um, kundalini called shakti. All right, 
um, in which that mm-hmm. magnetizes and pulls the Kundalini energy up through the um, spinal column, which is called the hollow area. It's called the Shashuna, from the base of the spine up to the top of the head of the crown. Um, all right, so um, the parasites itself um, impedes the process of the um, serpentine fire. All right. Mm. Um, what happens is that those parasites, by them causing destruction in the body, and see, you got to understand that whenever you see the Kundalini energy, you always have two serpents wrap around the base of the spine as it comes up in a crisscross pattern. That is on the um, that is the symbol of all hospitals around the world. All right, and particularly mm-hmm. here within the so-called United States, and that is a symbol of healing. So the Kundalini is supposed to produce healing effect within the body, not problems. So we know that it's not the Kundalini. It has to be the parasite so that is causing a problem in the body. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, but, um, the reason... the... no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, oh, you oh, I was going to go. Question. Say that again. No, you said you had another question. Go ahead. Oh, about the heart and the feather. And so people, we're doing all this health stuff so we can live longer um, instead of getting to the chase and seeing where your heart going to weigh. Well, in no, see, the whole purpose of living longer is to eliminate as much karma as possible. Oh, so okay, whole, okay. Right, so the heart is lighter than the feather because the more experiences you go through, guess what? Um, the more you come to the realization and wisdom that that was the wrong thing to do and therefore you change and make those proper corrections. Okay. All right. That's the morality um portion of that when you're dealing with um the um ancient comedic teachings, you know, of that I have not stolen, I have not um bear false witness or have lied against someone. All of that is part of the forty two um caught new virtues of my eyes. You know what I'm saying? That's where the um, morality um portion comes in at. And of course you wouldn't need that if you, you know, already was at the um epitome of your higher self. You only need that because We've been, um, we have fallen to such a state. You know, that's the portion of the fall of man, which is talking about the fall of consciousness. We fell from infinite consciousness to magnetic consciousness to um, super consciousness to subconsciousness to life consciousness to intrapersonal consciousness to interpersonal consciousness. You know what I'm saying? And that is demonstrated by the fact in which that the average person breathes about 18 breaths a minute. All right, which is the beast mm-hmm. breath. Six plus plus six symbolizes the beast breath. In other words, just dealing with the material plane, you know, me, myself, and I, you know what I'm saying, type of mentality. You know, but if you drop the breath to nine breaths, or if you go to 7.5 breaths, six breaths, 4.5, three breaths, one breath, then you enter those various different um, conscious states, one being infinite consciousness. So it's in that particular regard. So the fall of man is talking about consciousness. And as long as you're dealing with um, different states of consciousness, then, you know, you're always going to be dealing with different belief systems and different um, um, situations and events and problems on this plane of existence, you know, called the third dimension. So if you if you go early and you didn't have the wisdom and you didn't eliminate that karma and you reincarnate, you don't – you you do you get a chance to come back with some information or are you starting with a fresh slate and trying to figure it out? Well, remember, I um, spoke about the fact that there's an animal in which that stands by the scales. The animal is called animate, in which mm-hmm. that um, it eats the heart. It eats the heart, which means it eats the desires. It eats um, the memories of the individual. So you have to come back. Oh, and look, uh, um, um, um As Bobby said, you come back stuck in the, um, you know, in that little baby body, you know, trying to express mm-hmm. yourself. And the only thing, you know, um, and ain't nobody can understand what the hell you're saying until, you know, two or three years later. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Wonderful. You're you excellent. Know, I can't wait to be kind of Columbus. You know, but guess what? You do have access to your Akashic records, and that is at your Medulla Amagata, which is at the back of the head. In Qigong and Tai Chi, what you would do is tap at the back of the head under the um under the um ball. You got like a you know, when you feel your feel your head, you know, like there's mm-hmm. like a um, little area where the spine comes up into the skull. Right there, that's where the medulla oblongata is located at. If you tap there 25 times, three times a day, you will gain access to your past lives. They will come to you by way of, um, of um, daydreams or in the dream world when you sleep at night. All right? Um, so you have access to them, 
um, they put those because those um, really, those incarnations of your past lives are stored in what is called the over soul. Okay. Okay. So I'm you do have access, to them, but you don't have conscious access. You have to work at it. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Wonderful. Excellent. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Peace. All right. Let's go to area code. 850, area code 850, you're the line. Yeah, hello? Yeah, peace. Peace. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is the first time I ever contacted y'all. I heard you just this morning. I, I, got you, I got y'all on YouTube, Brother Panicky, with uh, another challenge you for mastering a magical mind, right? And so I heard you when you gave, I heard you when you gave out the number. And I said, wow, let me call, man, because, hey, I've been, I've been listening to y'all a long time, man. I want to thank y'all for all the, uh, all the messages y'all appreciate been giving us. Yeah, appreciate life. you for listening. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to uh, um, if I could email y'all, I could get in contact, like, getting books or, or either uh, some, some uh, uh, um, uh, like, Email. I could get a like. I could buy. I could buy some books, right? Hello? Right. Let me give Hello? you my um my website. Yeah. Let me give you my website. The website is www. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me... D. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Wait. www. Dot d r a l i m a l i m Right, Aleem as in I, Apple. Right, L as in loyal. I as in I, ice. I, M as wait, in mother. Well, you're going too fast. You lost me. We old here. <laughs> I'm okay. almost seventy. All right. <laughs> I, I got. I got. It's, it's, D R D R M I M. I got there. Right. E L. Right. E L B E Y. E L B E Y. Okay, right. that's the debate. Right. That's, e that's as in way. Edward. L as, e as in Edward. L as in Lord. E as in boy. E as in Edward. Y as in um yellow. Yeah. So okay. Salim L Bay dot com. Salim L dot com. Just check us out right there online, and um you can get um our email and also look at our um products, brother. Yeah, you oh, okay. Yeah. Email. Yeah, right. Yeah, I got. I got. Um, I'm trying to get a. I'm gonna try to get some of your stones, or get your chakra stones. I would like that. Right. One of uh, uh, panic uh, panic packs. I've been doing right. 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 Y'all been alive. Y'all y'all saved my life from nineteen from nineteen uh uh two thousand and seven. I didn't know. I didn't know where to go or what to do. So I wow. to y'all right. back to consciousness. So I just want to thank you, man. I, I continue listening. All right, appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We yeah, all right. We got area code two four eight. Area code two four eight. You on the line? Hey, what's going on? Can you hear me? Please, peace. We got you loud and clear. All right, hey brother Alan, how you doing? My name's Rich, man, calling out of um outside Detroit. How you... Right, right. The big D. The big D, yeah, yeah, man. Hey man, I've been um listening to your show for a few years and I, I was caught in a I discovered something which I talked with a few people and um let me let, let me let me let me ask you a question. Are you familiar with the former home of the Detroit Lions, like the Pontiac Silverdome, like the stadium? Uh huh. Out here, out here in Detroit. Yeah, the what big, about it, brother? What it is, remember when you mentioned like the heart has to be lighter than the feather, far as like to get to the new dimension, far as like you know, with all the karma and everything, right? Right. And what it was, I'll say about about six, seven months ago, I, I got that um, what you call that Godwin's Encyclopedia, Kabbalistic, mm-hmm. and um, I was reading something. Now, the Pontiac Silverdome, which is the former home of the Detroit Lions, which currently does not have a rooftop. It does not have a rooftop. Right. I think the West somehow it caved in. 
And what I right. figured out was the address that that stadium sits on, the address number is 1200, which it sits on 1200 North Featherstone. Now, what it is, on the other side of the town, the big courthouse for the county, the, the Michigan 6th um, District Court, is 1200 North Telegraph, which in that Kabbalist Encyclopedia, the number 1200 comes to the Shacks, Goatia. So we're talking about the Goatia right. Sigil. Now, check this right. out. The 44th Goatia Sigil is the 44th, which right here in Oakland County in Royal Oak, Michigan, where I live at, there's the 44th District Court, which is the sub-court of the 6th District Court, 1200. Right. Now, check this out. Right. The 44th Shacks Goatia says, Deprive anyone of sight, hearing, or understanding, steals money from the houses of kings and carries again in 1,200 years, 1,200 years, fetches horses or anything else, discovers hidden things not kept by evil spirits, sometimes gives good familiars, lies if not commanded to a triangle. What that is, when the lions played at the Silver Dome or whoever has an event there, the sight, the see, the hearing, and the understanding is took when you're at a football game, correct? Right, no doubt about it. Okay, Especially now when you walk past, Remember, the Super Bowl this past um, past year with um, Beyonce when the lights went out. So that was symbolic right. also of taking away of the site. Got you. Right, right, right. It, 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 it's not just this, it's all over. Right, it right. don't have to be that address. But what I noticed the most was the 44th District Court is a Masonic um, courthouse because it sits on a 45 degree angle and it resides on East it, rely, it resides on East 11 Mile Road, which 11 Mile mm-hmm. represents the. You see what I'm saying? So it's definitely right. a ritual. But what it is, it's a Vatican ritual because if the rooftop right. of the dome, the dome which represents the mind, there are spirits getting poured into that arena although there's not a team playing there. So the complete Detroit area is under a major, what you call that, witchcraft. Right, witchcraft, right, or vortex in which that those negative entities can come through or use as a portal from the um, first and second overtone level of the astral plane. I got you. Even though there's not a team playing there. Right. Damn. Exactly. You got it right on the spot. I just called the... Says panic, you know, panic somewhere. I don't know where panic at, but I have, you know, just come add that to it. <laughs> exactly. You know, we don't know where we at, but we're going to keep it going, damn it. And, it's, you know, you know, uh, you know, we're going to keep it going in this spirit. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, 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 right. Somebody got to pick that torch up. When, you know, when one, when one soldier is not, is, is, is warfare. When one soldier is, 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 is on the bench or or in, in rehab or some whatever is going on. Somebody always gotta be there to substitute. That's warfare, you know. So I appreciate it, man. I'm gonna go ahead and fall off, man. I know you're gonna build on the rest. So, but I'm a, that's that's very important because that stadium sits on Featherstone. I know that's um, Vatican ritual. I know that is. Hello? 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 Yeah, we back, we back. They must not like that shit. So what we're getting ready to do now is continue on at the phone lines. Um, we're going to go to area code 614. Area code 614, you're on the line. Yeah, you got to me already, uh, Dr. Arlene. Okay. Uh, let me go back to 50, let me see, 330, 330, you're on the line. Hello. Peace. Oh, so you can hear me? Yes, we can. Oh yeah, man. I, I've been listening to your I've been, I've been listening to your show for uh, four years. Oh word, appreciate that. You know what I mean? I, I mean, it was like it was like fate. You know what I mean? I was kind of like all oh, starting 2011 when, it, when like the Earth shifted. You know what I mean? Right. 
and, 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 and that's when I started getting some balls on the internet, and I discovered Bobby Hemis. And and, 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 and then, bro, panic. Right. You know, I started having these, uh, um, I, I started, like, doing these meditation, um, like, towards and seven. And, um, I started doing, you know, towards and seven. You know, I started doing my research, you know what I mean? So, right, um, right. I mean, I'm like, I've been doing, like, eight years of meditation, I'm like living what? in a hostile environment. You know what I mean? Right. I'm, it's just like make it harder for me to even like do these meditation. It's like some distraction. Right. 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 I'm like in and out of the hospital every day. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, I started experience. You know what I mean? And I was like meditating, like trying to develop my contract or like on twelve and eight. Right. I, been, I saw my own, my shadow, my own, you no know, spirit self. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay, it was okay. like exactly what what Bobby Hemis uh, saw uh, what what the spirit looked like. I saw my own spirit. You know what I mean? It was just right. you know what I mean. I couldn't like, explain what happened. In my, like like twenty eleven. You know what I mean? Right. Did your uh, spirit communicate to you? Did your spirit communicate to you? No. It, maybe it did. You no. Know, it said like events. It wasn't said oh, one okay, word. I got you. Right, right. You know, I had, I had experience, you know, one time, and I was like, went upstairs, I was walking upstairs, and I saw this this person in a black cloth walk past me. You know what I mean? Right. It just disappeared, a flash of the blink of the eye. And I'm the only one that saw right. it. Right, right, shadow beam. It was like, right. yeah, it was like black cloth, you know, I'm like, like straight Star Wars stuff, man. It was like, like Darth Vader, man. It was like, like, like a Jedi, man. It was like... It was like one of my spiritual experience, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, well, I, had, I had experience, no. Right. Uh, uh, no, I had, I had like, I, you know, I'm listening to your show all day, you know what I mean? I, it was the first time I ever, you know, talked to you, you know, like, it was, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, new to me, you know. It's just that, you no, know, I, I had experience, you know, you know, you know times, you no. Know, I, I mean, I'm just like, like wondering, like, like how even how long you've been doing meditation to reach to your spiritual light, me. You know, I've been doing this since nine, brother. Huh? Now, I've been doing this since I was nine years old. As far as meditation. Nine years old. Yeah. Man. I be I, 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 I be having visions, you know what I mean? Like, right. Like um, like visions, you know what I mean? And I was like, you no, know I mean, I, I just just my, my it's, just, it's just one of those um visions I have, and I just saw this big old purple eyes, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It was just like one of those like a a, a dirt eye activation, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Like the purple uh, is like, the color of the crown chakra. Huh? I said purple is the color of the eye of the um of, of the crown chakra. Yeah, purple which is yeah. violet, also um, white as well as also gold, and which that is the colors of the crown chakra. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been listening to like, your, your, I'm listening to Bobby Hems lectures and your lectures for like four years. I'm able to like deprogram my mind. Now, I never thought that I would ever encounter this, 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 this spiritual teachers like you and Bobby Hems. It was like, man, I was just searching the internet. You know what I mean? And just looking, right. seeking for knowledge. Right. No, I was still learning, and I was doing meditation, like meditating for eight years, and then just. Going in a hospital, like I'm living in a hostile environment. I'm just be like acting ugly all the time. I'm just irritated beyond words. I'm mean, just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I'm just be like, yeah. no, frustrated. You know what I mean? This meditation I'm doing, I'm just like, it's just so much pressure and stress. You know what I mean? I feel like my higher self, like, 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 put me in a hostile environment. You know, I'm just, you know, it's like push me, like, something like, kind of like that. You know what I mean? Right, right, like, right. Like, right. Like, some kind of like, I mean, I, I feel like, right. you know, my higher self, like, kind of like, 
You know, I, I, I started beginning to learn about these chakras, you know, in 12 and 6, you know, age 19. You know, I started to got, you know, because my life was, like, pretty messed up, you know what I mean? I felt like my life was getting worse every moment, you know, and I just, like, decided to search the Internet, you know, I just found by these chakras, you know, I started my own journey to this this um, journey of the hero, you know what I mean? Type of dance like like Jedi dance. You no, know, I was right. like I, was, I used to be. I used to force to go to church all the time. And I was little. You know, I got caught up in that Christian religion and stuff. But when I was younger. I was conscious. You know, I be seeing shadows. And I was little. You know what I mean? And I didn't know what it, I can't explain what, it, what I saw. You know what I mean? These shadows. Right, right, right. And I was like, I was so young, but I was conscious. But I was like. What, how I got here and it was my purpose and and when how who and what it was so much questions I didn't know about it. But I started doing research and at age nineteen and it was like I was just in the zone man I'm just like you know it was it just like you know, you know what I mean I'm, I'm I'm studying learning you know what I mean I'm just you know what I mean. I mean, I, I spent a lot of weird things, like these dreams I have. You know, I'm having, I started to, you know, listen to lectures and stuff, and and Bobby Hill lectures. I started to, the, the program. I started to um, decode my dreams and and write things down what I dream about. I started having these astral travel uh, experience. I started to having these visions. I started decoding it and stuff, and decoding movies and stuff. And you know, I'm just like in this yeah. reach to the higher consciousness. You know, to the point right. that I'm like no longer scared of the unknown. I'm right. like challenging right. Brother, myself. Did you have a question? Also? Did you have a question? Brother, did you have a question? Hello. Please, brother, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I was asking, did you have a question? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I was asking, did you have a question? Yeah, um... Yeah, what did, uh, something that you were um, doing, you know, as far as, um, you know, as a question? Talking to me? Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, uh, um, 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 Bobby, he was, was talking about, you no, know, being humble. You no, know, you no, know, man can't be a man without the feminine. Uh, can, can you describe about that? Yeah. Right. Well, um, what Bobby is talking about is that the soul principle um, is feminine, and also um, on Earth, the first manifestation of life form, as far as in a human body, was that of the female. So. Um, even within nine weeks within the womb, um, you will see um, the identical structure between the male and the female, um, which is that um, the male has the exact same structure as the female in the womb up to, you know, in nine weeks. So the feminine aspect is very important, you know, not the um, on no homo shit, but in the sense of that um, you have to bring about the unification between the yin and the yang which is a balance between feminine and masculine forces. Right now, as we go into this so-called new age, which is the age of Peru or the age of Aquarius, um, the feminine energy is on the rise. Um, you know, but it's being perverted by the establishment in order to effeminize the um, so-called black males or more Moorish males um, into homosexuality. And, um, you know, instead of using that energy properly in order to resurrect themselves. You know what I mean? So that's what is taking so, place right now. All right. So if we come down like if a, like if a man humbling himself, you know, and getting touched on the feminine side, you be like a man's man. Right, because even in martial arts, for example, um, when you have a lot of young energy, which is masculine energy, you have to balance it with the yin energy, which is feminine energy, so that you know um, you become um, balanced. You know, as far as the thought, which is you know, the synergy between both hemispheres of the brain. The left brain symbolizes masculine. The right brain symbolizes feminine. So it symbolizes the synergy or the combining 
for both hemispheres of the brain in order to bring that balance in which that is much needed. So I also go to meditate and to God because we need to be able to feel the spirit so we in the right place at the right time. You know, it's, it's really getting crazy, yo. People eating um, the, the children that have been um, missing, you know, being grind up in the food. That's crazy. So when we when we start activating and tapping into our higher selves, then you know, prayerfully we'll change this world for the better. But um, we got some other callers, God. If you can, you can call us privately, and um, we can add on because we appreciate that you're patronizing us and that you're supporting this information. I mean, what point is the information if don't nobody want to hear it? So we really appreciate you. Um, area code 803. Peace, Islam. Islam. Hey, greetings. Peace to the sister also. No doubt. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is um Kareem Bay calling out of uh, Carolina, representing Facade Morris Ancestral uh, Lineage. So right. Uh, yeah, was there for my brother. I just wanted to call for show, man, and send my peace and love and blessings out to you, bro. You know, you do well, and you show. Sure. That's right, and you do your duty, my brother. And um, no I want to continue. Describe behind you, my brother, but not necessarily behind you in the ways of rank, but more so behind you from your duties, brother, because you indeed are worthy for that cause at this particular time, my brother. I feel the ancestors, that's right, I feel the ancestors coming through you, and you run through me, and the rest of the brothers and sisters who represents the whole thing, and what you represent, which is that one, this, my brother, and bringing back that throne in the ways. Now, I know we were speaking on the metaphysical means and a higher form through these energies. And I recall a caller spoke in, and the phone went blank for a moment. We started speaking about these rituals and different things that exist. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, some individuals don't understand the aspects of how these energies and these planes move. And the being consists of these things through the magnetics of the mind, which is the matter. That's right. That's right. I have an individual. That's right. I have an individual who can bring things into existence without even knowing it. Be bringing these things into existence simply because they're unconscious from the ways of their movement through their powers and energy forces. That's right. You know, and on the aspects of the metaphysics, I think my my brother and we is speaking to the sisters and everyone out there listening. You know, we have to also not necessarily focus on that esoteric form of these sciences, but we have to also go into the interior states that are just inside the being. You know, because a lot of individuals are separating themselves, and we understand that we are all from the same atom. We're all from the same forces of the energies and the power and elements that exist inside of each That's individual right. being. That's right. That's right. Um, so I just want to... That's right. That's right. So, you know, my mm-hmm. brother, um, I, bro, it's hard to kind of ask you a question, my brother, because, I mean, you, you, you touch the surface, brother, because you're 360, you know. So I understand, brother, like myself, when I do call him and just continue, you know, continues to add on until I know the time comes, we can seek ourselves on a physical level and we can pay that true respect to each other, you know. So um, mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep listening in, man, and sending my love out, brother. You know, we over here, the Carolinas over here, represent facade, man. We behind you all, man. Other 100 percent, bro. You know we we to a living, bro. You, you can believe that, son. Um, Islam yeah, hotel, salon, hotel, and everything you know, else, my brother. Hotel. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. Uh, speaking of that, for those who's in the Carolinas and um, outside of the Carolinas, we got a event coming up March 24th, 27th, and 23rd. In which that we'll be dealing with this type of information. We'll be dealing with um, Qigong, Tai Chi. Praying and Killing, Reiki, um, Kutalini Yoga, uh, Astrology, Numerology, Metaphysics, Esoteric Teachings, the Occult, uh, Rituals, and we'd be dealing with everything that you can possibly think of um, for those three days. That's March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, um, First World Order Radio, United Washington um, presents um, the Healing Wings Conference. All right, that's March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Um, it's going to be located here in North Carolina at 2188 
White Oak Road, Kelly, North Carolina, 28448. That's 2188 White Oak Road, Kelly. That's K-E-L-L-Y, North Carolina, 28448. So get your GPSs ready because um, for those who need to come, want to come, desire to come, come. All right? So y'all can get this information um, firsthand. We're going to be dealing with um, Qigong, um, with, um, you know, dealing with first and second and third certificate certification, Reiki and Ushi Reiki, Segmat Reiki, and Tibetan Reiki, um, Reiki 1, 2, and 3, so you get um, attuned to the Reiki master level or teacher level, um, just like I did with Brother Panic and his wife, um, Khadija, all right, and also Brother King Cook, all right, um, as well as also um, y'all can come and, you know, get, you know, all this information that you hear me spit, um, you know, on the higher levels here. So, you know, come on and check this out, March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Um, let's go to the phone lines. We're going to area code 512. This is my man, Mike Mike. Peace, my brother, my brother, Lane. <laughs> How you doing, God? I'm doing good, God. How you doing tonight? I was going to say, um, I took a long nap. But earlier, <laughs> earlier, um, you know, basically, I, I I got in my zone. I was doing um, the the microcosmic orbit just enough, and I felt, you know, the breath just. It's not you. You ain't even got to worry about. You know, I, I mean, you still incorporate the, you know, the penis, the phallus, but it's like the breath just, you know, what I'm saying, took over me. Um, is, but you spoke on that before. Does that mean the Kundalini has risen? Well, basically, um, it's been magnetized in order to rise, and you do that by way of the shakti, the magnetic energy or that cool sensation of which that pulls up through the spinal column. Um, and um, it happens, you know what I'm saying, especially when you do the cobra breath technique. You know, yeah. um, of course, with the cobra breath technique, you know, you got one, two, three, four um, initiation of the cobra breath technique. And the last three, um, you get initiated by Baba G, um, you know, on the astral plane. You know what I'm saying? Um, he give you the last three, you know, through that instruction. And that comes by way of your practice on a daily basis of either you being initiated to um, Cobra Breath 1, um, Cosmic Cobra Breath 1, 2, or 3. Um, you know, so it's seven mm -hmm. levels in total. So, you know, right now what you're well, feeling I, I felt... is the magnetizing, you know, of that um, Shakti energy, uh, which is part of the Kundalini, Kundalini Shakti to um, raise well, up saying, to become part of Kundalini Kuba. Yeah, is that, um, mm -hmm. like I'm saying, the full the full body orgasm, I mean, if you've done that, does that mean the Kundalini has risen? Or, or um, yes, that means that, um, that means it has um, magnified itself beyond the 10% level of the, norm, of the normality, you know, which that we are presently with. You know, like you said, the present... You know, presently, the average person only use 10% of the brain, 10% of the DNA, 10% um, of their vision as far as um, looking out at the night sky, as well as also only 10% of their Kundalini energy. So what you have done is um, magnified it or expanded, I should say, all right? And by expanding it, um, yes, you have gone beyond the 10% level in which that now the energy is producing through and running through the course of your meridians and your nadis. So that's what produces a full body orgasm is when that energy goes through, um, you know, basically it's like lighting up your body like a Christmas tree, as we would say. And that's what produces yeah. that um, the whole body orgasm because you feel the energy pulling from each of your um, extremities. You know, you feel I mean, it pulling from your arms, from your torso, from your legs, from your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, f I just felt like a wolf today with with so much energy and like yeah. like you always said, like it it crucifies the lower nature. So even like right, no thoughts doubt. that like used to tamper uh, or mess with me, it's just like it's being it's like it's burning away. Not that I ever really did anything that bad or anything. It just it it feels like it's being um or it's been 
burned away. So it, I, that's definitely God's state. I mean, it's like you can see from such a, a different um, perspective, you know, and the things that say maybe you were not, at, you didn't think you were good at before, but when you see from this, you know, you can kind of study all areas, you know. Um, no doubt. I, I was just going to say, because uh, I fell asleep listening to Montage so I, I want to make I, I want to make sure that uh, it, if this is the macrocosmic uh, technique, is it when it it rises from the perineum and then it goes over the um, goes over the head and then down uh, the torso and then out through uh, out through the feet. And then rises well, up the back of the legs. Nah, what? Um, that's the macrocosmic orbit technique that you're talking about. And what happened is that um, you throw up the energy in your lower dantian, which is your navel, pull it down to your perineum, up through your um, spine to the top of your head, um, and back down to the perineum. And that's just on, um, you know, just the breath itself, just on the inhale. As you exhale, then you uh, move it from the perineum down the back of the legs, over, um, you know, under the feet, over top of the feet, to the knees, um, to the thighs, back to the perineum. All right? So your oh. inhalation, you inhale is go, right. Remember, what I was talking about is the class experience in which that um, I was talking about activating your foot chakras so that you can learn how to ground energy. All right, but right now we're just talking about how to do it, you know, um, beyond the grounding of energy and opening up the bubbling spring, which is at the um, sole of the feet. You know what I'm saying? See, see, cats don't really want to get detailed about this shit because, you know, they'd rather um, be surface dwellers and just, you know, um, look at this from a surface mean, you know, but, you know, we really get deep in class, you know, and get specific in detail, you know, for those that want to learn about the science of Hill and Wings um, Institute and what we teach in class. Brother Mike is part of the class. That's why he asking this question. So, um, but, oh, um, yeah. I, I sent you the books, you know, um, hopefully you got them and, um, you know, check them out. Um, portions of it is in there and I'm going to give up the rest of the portions on Sunday. I'm going to get back to this phone line though, because I got a lot of callers. So, um, All right, peace, brother. Um, Mike, appreciate you brother for um, calling in. You know, we're going to get up Sunday, and you know where to reach me at. And, um, yeah. you know, all right, one. All right, take it easy, brother. Peace. All right, we got area Peace. code 313. Area code 313, you're on the line. Well, Dr. Mm-hmm. Aline Bay. It's a much big-time pleasure for me to talk to you. Um, I have been experiencing – can you hear me? Yes, we can, brother. Appreciate you calling. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I have been experiencing um, tr- seeing triple threes and double threes a lot as within the past uh, maybe about the past four months, four or five months. And um, what's, what's funny, well, obviously I'm asking you about it, but what's funny about it is that I'm a third, you know, my suffix is third. Um, my Both of my work phone number and my my right, cell phone, phone number. number is, three, 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 three. Right, exactly. Right. Right, <laughs> right, right, exactly. Triple, right, well, triple three symbolizes um, Ein, Ein Sof, and Ein Sophie Er, which is symbolic to um, three trimester periods within the woman's womb. The first um, three months, the second three months, in the third three months, which three times three is the number nine. Um, so three plus three plus three is what we just talked about, which comes to the number nine, which means to born or to bring a thing into existence. That's what that is symbolic to, brother. Hmm. So, uh, what am I mean? I don't need. That means that, that means that particular energy is around you right now in order to manifest what you want in life. And what you oh. um, desire to really do. That's what that means. Um, see, when you start seeing specific numbers, um, those numbers, um, just like animals, 
just like um, mm-hmm. people they signify some type of um, correspondence um, emotionally and mentally. You know what I'm saying? For example, if you see a um, a cat run across the road, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, cat symbolizes, um, um, just like dog, symbolizes a form of protection. You know what I'm saying? Especially if the cat is not um, biting you, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case is. You know, if the right. cat is biting you, then, you know, it would symbol- symbolize that, you know, um, you know, basically that not only do you have, I guess you would say, an enemy, but that um, the enemy is close upon you in which that may even be causing you some type of problems because, like we said mm. earlier about negative thought forms, all right? So negative right. thought forms, people have a tendency of being to um, being able to impend upon your auric field in which that causes them leaks and holes. So if it's biting you and if you see in a dream, um, or even if you, you know, in real life and it actually is biting you and it actually draws blood, then that actually what could be this, um, the symbology meaning behind it, all right? And this is either in um, so-called apparent world or even in the dream world, so it doesn't change. The same um, problem is based on that. And also to see a cat symbolizes an independent um, spirit, also feminine sexuality or creativity and power, um, that's if it's not harming you, all right? Um, but if it's harming you, then it also represents misfortune and bad luck. So, you know, we just put it like wow. that, all right? Wow. But, you know, that's but, so that's what the number symbolizes. The positive thing is that it symbolizes to bring um, the thing into existence, the born a thing into existence. So that means that type of energy is around you since everything is 333, all right? That means you're so in order to tap into it. You have the ability in order to tap onto the unknown or to manifest what you want here in this reality or apparent reality. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's great, great. Okay. Do do I do you have time for another question or no? Um I'm gonna hold you on. I'm gonna um, come back <laughs> to you. Just hold on. Let me, let me okay. try to get as many other ones out the way. Okay. Hold on, okay? Thank you. Yeah. All right. You got international call one one one, you're on the line. Peace, what's good, man? Peace, peace, how you doing? Alright, check that article out about those uh about those ships up there on Mars. I mean on, on the moon. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Um yeah, um well we we've been knowing that in the um area of Sidonia, um, uh, which is um the area where they found the pyramids, the area where they faced is on Mars, the area where they found golden um um glass like structures. Um, they also found ships. They also found um, other types of crafts. They found all types of things because if you read in the Zulu Bone Oracle by Credo Mutua, who's a South African shaman, he speaks about the fact that before we came to the planet Earth, we resided on Mars. The Zulu people known as the Amazulu, the word Amazulu means sky people. So that's where we were, was on the uh, fifth planet before we came to this one, which was our sixth planet. We are planet jumpers. All right, and we do that by way of the macabre, by transforming our bodies into ships. All right, this is a technique in which that I learned in the Flower of Life um, meditation by Dravalo Melchizedek called the 18 breath, the 24 breath, and the 28 breath um, technique in which that transform your body into a ship called a macabre. These techniques was taught to the ancients um, on Mars, and the men impregnated the women, and the women arrived here upon planet Earth. All right, um, ready to give birth to the um, to the new life here upon this planet. This is the way in which that critical draw um, breaks down this information. Okay. Okay. Mhm. Yeah, that was deep though. You know. Uh, but yeah, oh, well, um, appreciate you sending that yeah, article, brother. You. Definitely got a chance to peep it. My wife showed it to me and everything. And I said, oh yeah, um, um, I'm probably going it. Yeah, they had another one too. They were talking about uh, King Tut and how he was uh, mummified with his uh, phallus on, uh, you know, right, a rat. Straight, straight up, uh, it was on the hard. That's right, because he came in the image of men, which is um, a form of Amen, who was the fidelity deity. And every time you see him um, on the walls of ancient Egypt, his penis is erect, symbolizes the resurrection or the raw erection. 
Yeah, yeah but they what? they took one man phallus and everything though. Oh yeah, they always do that. I, I mean, they did that to um, Malcolm X. Uh, when he died, they went back and checked the body. When the Muslims wrapped him up and took him or took off them damn European um, that European suit. Um, well, it ain't really European. It's Yoruba, but it came from out of Nigeria. But the Europeans got in, um, you know, um, ran with it. But anyway, um, when they took him out that suit, you know what I'm saying, and they wrapped his body up, they found out that his genitals was missing. All right, so that symbolizes, you know, um, the castration symbolizes, you know, the taking away of his um, of his manhood. You know what I'm saying? The European has all types of rituals in which that this is the reason why um, we have to learn this shit right now. So in order to protect ourselves and our ancestors, you know what I'm saying, um, um, you know, um, and our, you know, our people to come, you know. But let me get back to the yeah, phone they, lines here, brother. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 but they some, they some straight cannibals, man, how they did, like, how they did the sister Henrietta Lacks, you know, because they, you know, they turned her oh, cells yeah. into medication. They, how, they did her, right, how they took her cells, her, um, her um, cervix cells, and then used them in the base of, for the vaccines. Um, well, also, Sarah Barton, how they took her buttocks and put them on display at a goddamn, you know, at the goddamn museum, you know what I'm saying, in the British Museum. And um, if it wasn't for, you know, the, um, you know, for the Hottentots of South Africa, the Bushmen of South Africa, along with, um, along with Mandela, Nelson Mandela, he asked for the remains of Sarah Barton to return, be returned back to South Africa. All right. Um, they did the same thing. They stuffed the body of um, Mike of um, Angelo Solomon. You know what I'm saying? Who is like, you know, the, one of the founders of um, Freemasonry in Europe. You know what I'm saying? He was a Moor. And they stuffed his body, you know what I'm saying, um, and put it on display. So, yeah, they, they have a sick fascination you know what I'm saying, with us, man. And have a 300,000 yeah, missing children in North America. Um, they're using their blood, you know, and their rituals of Passover and then selling the remains to McDonald's. So they got people eating the missing children. And how they put the newspapers in um, Trayvon Martin's body. So we got to meditate. We need to be in the right place at the right time. And we need to be activating these superpowers. Exactly. That's what Dick Gregory was talking about is that, you know, when they took and checked um, Trayvon Martin's body, his organs was missing. And his body was stuffed with paper. And his um, insides was stuffed with um, newspaper. So um, we got to watch this shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're dealing with um, cannibalistic beings on this planet. Um you know, David Icke referred to them as the reptilians, but we just refer to them as the Neanderthals or devils. You know, they got um, 4% of the Neanderthal genes, and they all, and if you look up any article about the Neanderthal, you'll find that it was cannibalistic. Um, being that um, the European um, and um, portions of the Asians still have this 4% um, um, Neanderthal gene, Dr. Phil Valentine spoke about it, that they still have the tendency towards cannibalism. You know what I'm saying? And that doesn't go outside of um of um Africans, you know what I'm saying? Um and um us particularly, we practice this shit too in church every you know, every Sunday, at least once a month, we do communion, talking about um this is the body of Christ and this is the blood of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? We doing that same bullshit too. So we are um raised in that same mentality. All right, so um let me go to area code two one six. Area code two one six, you're on the line. Hello? Yes, peace, peace. What's going on, Aleem? This is Marvin from Cleveland, man. All right, brother. How you um, doing? I'm good. I got hip to y'all brothers through Panic, listening to Panic and Bobby. I just got conscious. Right. And, um, I, went, I went through Panic class, and then I actually went to your website, man. You got so much stuff on there. It was like it took me an hour to go through everything. But um, I just appreciate I just appreciate y'all just helping me get conscious and, and develop myself spiritually. And... Um, I'm going, I went through the class with panic, and then I hear you talking about uh, the breath. And I just wanted to know if you can um, elaborate more on the breathing techniques. Because now I just got the earth pack from panic, and I'm ready to really go in and get this work going. Right, right. Well, the breath, what it does, brother, is that um, the breath helps with everything in your physical body, your circulation, um, your lymphatic system, your digestive system, you know, um, your, ment- your mentality as far as um, solving stress, being um, calming yourself from a stressful and emotional or mental situation, the breath does all of that. The breath is what raises the kundalini 
in order to um, out of the lower self into the higher self. Now, the four okay. um, devils, which is called the four lower chakras, the heart chakra, which is conditional love, the solar plexus, the navel chakra, and the uh, um, base chakra, those four chakras dies along with the physical body, and the energy itself returns back to the realm of form. The three higher chakras um, remain and survive death. Um, this is called your Aku or your Ku, um, which is your throat chakra, your um, third eye, which is your um, spiritual chakra, and then your crown chakra, which is your soul chakra, which is the Ka and the Ba. So your Aku, Ka, and the Ba survive death and is like an egg. So what happens is that you must raise your Kutalini into your higher body, um, in which that symbolizes the heart being lighter than a feather. Anytime that your Kutalini can't raise above the heart chakra, then you are in problems of um, having to reincarnate. So the whole science about breath is mastering the science of breath. And one of the techniques is learning how to expand um, your chakras, you know what I'm saying, by okay. via way okay. of, um, um, by via way of, you know, the expansion of your aura. And like we said earlier, there's three pranic healing techniques in which that, or breath techniques in which that one is called empty retention, in which that there's no particular, um, particular count. You just simply breathe in, hold your breath, breathe out, hold your breath, all right? Um, another okay. one is 633. Three. So you would breathe in for six seconds, hold it for three seconds, breathe out for six seconds, um, breathe, um, hold it for um, three seconds. Another one is 7171. One. You breathe in for seven um, seconds, hold it for one second, breathe out for seven seconds, hold it for one second. So... Um, once you learn these particular breath techniques, your aura will expand from three feet to 15 feet outside of you. And um, a master, uh, once they master the signs of breath to such an extent over years and years and years, can actually stretch their auric feel outside of them um, a mile. All right? Um, wow. When you okay. learn the breath technique, you learn the breath technique um, on how to activate and transform your body into a macabre, which is the 18 breath, the 24 and the 28 breath technique, your aura flattens into like a circular um, UFO shape structure and um, spans out 55 feet in perimeter. All right. And you and another mm -hmm. person who um, learn how to do the technique can actually um, um, blast off and take 144,000 with you. So that is um, part of the information on which that you would get also from um, with Valo's Malchester books, Flower of Life, Volume 1 and Volume 2. So the signs okay. of breath is very important. Um, learn also the alternating nostril breath technique. You would breathe in, um, hold your right nostril closed, breathe in through your left nostril, through your left nostril for a count of four, then hold both nostrils closed for a count of 16, and then breathe out your right nostril for a count of eight. So the count is four, 16, eight. And you'll alternate mm -hmm. back and forth between or in 20 sets. What happens is that that synergizes both hemispheres of the brain and open both nostrils so that you can breathe simultaneously through both nostrils instead of like the average person that, you know, one of the nostrils is clogged up every damn two hours, which shows that they have an right. excess, you know, they have an excess of mucus, you know, in their body. Yeah, because I know I experienced that. I've been practicing uh, certain breathing techniques. Uh, I read out of... Uh, Man Talk Tia's book about cultivating male sexual energy. I've been practicing right. those techniques and then um, uh, so right. the, the, the 646 breath, I think you said, in the Astral Travel book, uh, Astral right. Travel for Beginners. Mm -hmm. And I keep mm -hmm. experiencing that whole thing about the nostrils being clogged up and being congested and shit like that. So right. is it right. something that I well, keep thing... practicing or is it? Right. Keep practicing, but also drink more water. And also, okay. um, you can um, take um, in your water, make sure it's alkaline. You can put um, put also um, a little bit of sea salt um, or baking soda, or you can also put hydrogen peroxide, okay? okay. Um, you want to be able to put a little bit of one of those three um, into it. You don't have to put all three, but one of those three into your water. And what that does, the salts... Um, sea salt and the baking soda have the tendency of being able to remove excess mucus. You can also use certain herbs such as yellow dock, chaparral, burdock, golden seal, dandelion, milk thistle. You know what I'm saying? So um, mm -hmm. those herbs okay. also um, eliminate 
um, excess mucus in the body. And also okay. calling. Mm-hmm. But thank you, bro. Oh, Appreciate you calling in. Oh, yeah. I'll be checking out that class, too, man. I'm about to make the range with Sue, man, so I'll get down there in March. All right. Appreciate that, brother. Can't wait All right, to see Thanks, you. man. All right. All also, right. Also, um, make sure you RSVP at the website, drlelbay.com. You can RSVP at the calendar and um, events. Um, you can also prepay, too. To just um, also, too, God, the brother said that we have a lot on our website. We're doing that so that we can bounce economics in the community more than, you know, than it did in um, in Black Wall Street. So it's a beautiful thing. All right. We have a Minty um, Astrology. You're on the line. Yeah, I just had a question about the um, Indians. Why do they wear yeah. the uh, the red dot on their head when the re- when right. the uh, when the when the that's the pineal gland, which is purple, and the red dot is the root chakra. So why do they wear that color on their head, and why do they wear it so big? Well, the way it is is that they want to raise the red chakra, um, the kutalini from the red chakra, which is the base chakra, root chakra, up to that third eye area, just like you would see the serpent coming from out of that same area on the ancient Egyptian um, tiaras or crowns of which that they wore. Um, you would see the serpent coming out right there, um, um, right above the, um, you know, in the center, in between what is called the third eye, up above the eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. So... Um, that's the reason why they wear it red is because prana is also red and the kundalini is a form of prana. Kundalini is actually the concentration of prana within the body and prana is the color red. So um, remember the slowest spectrum of light on the planet is what's called the physical body. That was red light. The fastest spectrum of light is violet. All right. So yes, it does symbolize the crown chakra or the, um, um, in that regard. But when the Kundalini rises, um, um, they have it as the color red because it symbolizes um, them raising their lower chakra into their higher self or their mortal body. And uh, and I don't. Why do they? Okay, I understand that they're like vegetarian and they wear that kind of lifestyle, but yet the foods that they eat, you know, they don't wear deodorant and stuff. But the food that they eat contradict what they do, like. They eat kind of savage and like food, even though they claim they don't eat meat. You understand what I'm saying? And the spices that they wear, like, do they bathe? What is the purpose of them not do? You know, wearing um not underwear but uh deodorant, and you know they still have that odor. Like, is there is that on purpose? What's the purpose of that? Well, you know, the spices in which that um they take large amounts of is curry, which is actually turmeric, in which that, mm-hmm. um in order to um, cure a person from cancer. Um, so um, they take large amounts of that. They put that in their food. And the fact of them not wearing deodorant, because the majority of the deodorants that's out on the market um, is aluminum base. And when aluminum is stored in the body, it can cause Alzheimer's and dementia. So um, people don't want um, want that. So um, what it is they want, right, and also lymphomic cancer. So what it is is that they want something more natural, and yes, you know, um, I'm pretty sure that they know about some of this information now. There's natural crystals in which that um, a person can use um, as the order. And there's also baking soda and different other things that can be used, lemon juice. Um, so, you know, it's just about a person finding their way as far as um, within a culture. And it's just like the um, the 100 monkey theory. Once one monkey do one particular thing, then the whole community would begin to start doing the same thing. I, I'm just saying because I, I watched the show Bizarre Fool, so he goes to different cultures, and I'm just I I don't if you're going to live this lifestyle, but the, yet the food contradicts even with the Pakistanis, the food that they eat is like is disgusting, but they they don't eat pork and then they don't wear deodorant. It, it's just I'm just that's why I asked that question. I was trying to understand right, it. Right, right. Well, it's just it's every. Everybody have a different culture, in which that you know, um, you know. If you do real historical research, you will find that there's problems with everybody's culture on the planet. You know, there's things that you're not going to agree with. You know what I'm saying? Um, for example, if you um, consider yourself an African, there were certain tribes on which that dealt with um, cannibalism. 
Um, if you consider yourself um, a Native American, um, you might not like the fact that uh, when you came into a particular village, you know, the chiefs or the males would offer their wives, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, to be sexually intimate you know, with, um, with the stranger who was visiting to um, the camp. So there's things within cultures in which that you're not going to agree totally with. And the thing is about cultures that they always can be defined, redefined. So, you know, don't get caught up into just, you know, things of a particular culture because, you know, um, the whole thing of mastering these high, you know, these higher principles is to develop um, the highest form of culture upon this planet. Um, and as we see, um, there is a force on this planet that's attempting not to um, allow us to do so um, and not to be free thinkers, but to keep us trapped in a um, religion belief system in which that is actually detrimental to our own um, existence. And one quick question. Um, I'm I'm also yeah. from this, um, from uh, North Carolina, like 30 minutes from you. Do you what do you say to the people from up north that's coming down south? Do you believe that's a part of why the southern weather has gotten so cold, or or why the the energy in the south has shifted because the people from up north are coming down there now? Well, what what happened is that um um over from from December 21st, 2012 until December 21st. 2013, there was a shift in the fields of the sun, the magnetic fields of the sun. The sun fields flipped, so the north magnetic field became the south magnetic field, or vice versa. So that is actually what is taking place right now. In the polar on vortex, in which that scientists are claiming, in which that has manifested, in which that is coming to the north and south poles. So this energy is being shifted, and see, during this process, um, you have the Albion or the European, in which that is doing a lot of harp system and chemtrailing. So all of this is playing into the effect of the climate and the weather conditions in which that is, um, you know, in the south and um, throughout actually the whole of America and around the world. Well, I, well, one more thing. I just noticed, like, a lot of New Yorkers, even myself, like um, a lot of brothers and sisters are suddenly, like, Waking up one day and like, yo, I'm leaving. I don't want to be here anymore. And they just pack their stuff up and go. Suddenly, quit their job, whatever they have to do, and just go down south. Yeah. That's why I posed that question. It seems like right. it, it, we're all leaving. Even myself. Like one day, I woke up and was like, yo, I'm I'm not going to be here another such and such years. I'm going to be back down south. You know. So, yeah, that's why I yeah. posed that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Exactly, and I mean, and that is part of the awakening. Remember when I was talking about the fields um, changing? Uh, is a solar plasmic energy which is on the planet Earth from the sun. Um, it's called solar wind. Um, it's called corona mass um, which is uh, coming off from the sunspot activities from the um, sun, in which that is causing subtle changes in our DNA, which is called the awakening. Um, in which that is causing us to move down south, further south, where it is warmer, in which that is more conducive to our melanin, um, you know, state. Mm-hmm. Well, thank also, you for to add on, um, New York is supposed to be flooding. A lot of people have been having horrible dreams about it. So, you know, it could be the vibration telling everybody to get to sleep. It's going to be difficult to evacuate New York being an island and being also a bridge. Them bridges are already being jam-packed. You know, during um, rush hour and whatnot, so it might be for protection. Right, exactly. And my wife is saying that because on the new $100 bill, um, there's a video on YouTube in which that shows and demonstrate that um, that the possibilities um, that between New York and Detroit, there might be um, a gigantic um, water flood in which that um, would take place, some type of tsunami um, based on... Um, when you put it into an airplane, um, you know, just like they did with the five, the one dollar bill, the five dollar bill, the ten dollar bill. Uh, when you fold those, as well as also twenty dollar bill, when you fold them, they also have traces of what took place in nine eleven. But if you fold the new one hundred dollar bill into a um, airplane condition, you find on it um, flooding of a major city in which that some is was either New York or either Detroit. So um, that is definitely to watch out for, and that might be also, like my wife was talking about, the reason why um, you had to urge her to get the hell out of Dodge. Because mm-hmm. I'm also from New York, 
I'm also from New York, so you know, I've been had that feeling with the hell about the Dodge a long time ago. All right, appreciate you guys for um, giving us a call in. I'm getting ready to go to the phone lines. Um, area code four. Four, you on the line? Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. What's going on? Well, I wanted to um to say something, make a statement that was going to lead into a question. Um, I wanted to bring it back to the chakra. All right, and um, I was uh you know, building with myself and then thinking on uh, the days of the week, you know what I mean, uh, representatives of each chakra, you know what I mean? And uh, I have an understanding of three of the days, what I would like for, you know, someone to know or if if you know how to, you can, you can uh, fill in the, the other missing days. Well, uh, to me, Monday, you know what I mean, represents the uh, base chakra, you know what I mean, the bowels of the chakra, which would, which would uh, uh, elaborate mundane, okay? And then uh, Saturday, right, to me, Saturday is uh, a day that, well, I looked up uh, either Sat or Saturn, and uh, the definition of it broke down to, like, uh, like masculine and feminine, you know what I mean? course dealing on principles but masculine and feminine like it was neuter you know what I mean it was a neuter word which meant to me meant uh the third eye and where actually the masculine and feminine principles meet at that chakra you know what I mean because uh we say what 85 percent of the chakra is uh the feminine principle you know what I'm saying so the feminine actually uh, meets with the masculine principle at that point, right? And then, of course, you have Sunday, which represents the crown chakra, the sun, you know what I mean, so on and so forth, you know what I mean? But I wanted to know if uh, you could fill in the spaces, you know what I'm saying, because I haven't really uh, gotten or figured out the rest of them. Right. Well, um, based on um, astrology, when you do your research on that, find out that um, Sunday symbolizes the crown chakra because of the sun. And then when you um, have what is called, quote, unquote, um, illumination, and you do your research and study and you come from out of the darkness into the light, um, your pineal gland becomes fully activated. It produces a sun disc illumination around the head called a halo or a halo. Yeah, exactly, right, right. Right, so yes, right. Sunday symbolizes um, that illumination. The reason why they also have church on Sunday is because of that same um, reverence um, to the sun, claiming that the pagans or the indigenous people were sun worshippers. But we understood that um, we was melanated, and therefore we needed the sun, and to be in the sun um, at least one to three hours a day as compared to the European who can only be in the sun for 15 to 20 minutes. And these um, screen blocks, because of the fact of, uh, um, you know, because they can, you know, catch carcinoma or melanoma, all right? So Sunday is definitely the day of the illumination. Saturday deals with Saturn, in which that would be correlated to actually our um, base chakra, or root chakra, which is the, um, the resonance, which is symbolic to lead, all right? The sun is symbolic to gold. So Saturday would be symbolic to lead, which is Saturn, in which that is... Um, Saturday, in which that um, is the root of base chakra, all right? Um, Monday would be symbolic to um, the pituitary gland, which is, um, you know, in the head also, but it is based on the moon or, you know, or what is called, you know, moon, a moon day, all right? The moon day, all right? Then you have Tuesday, you know, in which that is symbolic to um, the warrior spirit in which that actually symbolizes um, the solar plexus, all right? Then you have Wednesday in which that would, you know, which, um, you know, also, you know, um, Wednesday would be symbolic, you know, to, um, well, some point to the navel, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then you have Thursday in which that would be symbolic to, you know, um, 
the heart, and then you have the Friday, which would be symbolic to um, the throat chakra. Right. right. So um, it depends on what books that you read. The good book in order to go through that is uh, written by Rudolf Steiner um, um, out of the Anthroposophical Society. Um, another good book would be dealing with um, that type of a would be um, Manly P. Hall in his Secret of All Ages. Uh huh. Okay. Those are the two books that I can think of right now off the top of the head. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I appreciate that, brother. And just one more thing, you know what I mean, to, to yeah. add on to, to the conversation that was going on. Uh, never mind. I lost train of thought, brother. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still taking on what I first said. But go ahead. Go it's ahead. all right. Um, Peace, if, if, if you need to. Right, if it comes back to mind, just hold on and um, call back in or hit one, I should say, okay? Okay, peace. I appreciate that. Peace. All right. We got area code 910. Area code 910, you on the line. Hello. Peace. Greetings. Oh, how's everybody doing? I'm oh, sorry. Um, I, I had to ask you a private message you and ask you about what was a good book for um, Planet Breathing, and you gave me the... um gave me the one that's on your website, so I'm, like, actually looking at it now. That's why I was on the phone line trying to uh, get through. But right now, I just really appreciate all the information y'all are putting out there, and I'd rather someone else ask a better question because right now listening is doing me uh, better than actually asking a question. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, appreciate you listening, guys. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. We got area code 505-505. You're on the line. Serene B. Greetings, peace. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, all right. How you doing? I'm my child, Shiva, and peace. I'm up here in New, up in New Mexico. And, all right. Um, I don't know if you have ever talked about it on our show before, or, you know, or heard about it. Have you ever heard them about the uh, cremation of diamonds, create um, cremating your um, loved ones, as they would say? You ever heard of that? Yes, I've heard of that. Have y'all talked about mm-hmm. that on the show? Oh, okay. no, we haven't talked about that on the show. Mm. No, not yet, but um, that's a good show topic. We can definitely get into it. Well, that's something you need to look into because when you were talking about a lot of our uh, people coming up missing, what they do, right. they use their, their cremating them and they're exactly. putting the ashes, they're making them into diamonds. So you think about right. it, exactly. they're using it. Energy. Right, because we're carbon. Right, because we're, carbon. we're carbon, and what is carbon? Carbon is nothing more than uh, when heat and friction um, is added to carbon, it forms a diamond. So definitely. Mm-hmm. So that it's that energy. And right now, you're looking at it, that dark matter or that dark energy, that melanin is what they want. Like they said, that's a billion-dollar industry yeah. right now. So they're that's getting right. it in every way they can, wearing it on their body. And they're trying to, um, you know what, a good example, that um, it's a series maybe or it was a movie or something called Daybreakers. I don't know if you ever right. heard of it or thought. Yeah, I've seen it. But Daybreakers, yeah, seen you did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. remember the part same where. Dude. That's like the same dude that was blood. in Daybreaker. The same dude that was in Daybreaker was the same dude that um, um was in, that played Frost in um, Blade. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you well you know what I'm talking about then. So at that part where, where they were putting the blood in and it started at six, right? And then right. as they added the blood, it started going up. The numbers started going up, but they was trying to keep right. them down. The further up it mm-hmm. went, like it got close. When it when it hit seven, it just burst out everywhere. And people don't right. if you look at the, the the symbolic meaning of that. The six when they come out the six six six, they say the awakening of the beast. Right. That's awakening of the energy us. And what happens is right, when we're awakened, that means we're on the verge. Right. So when we rise up, yeah, seven means completion. That's the man coming. He's, he's awakening. Here's the nine coming right. now. That's why you see so much about the female coming in and excuse the strong language, whatever, ass, 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 ass. That's what you're seeing. But you see a lot of right. that, and they're using that back part of it because, you know, 
that bad part of it, when you go through the butthole, that brings in the negative or the ill-willed entity. And through the, you know, those, right. those rituals they be doing. So in the midst of that, that's why they don't, you know, they're trying to use the feminine energy. Well, right now, because the seven has awakened, which is the men, which now they have awakened to the feminine energy. That's what that dude was mm-hmm. talking about. When you start seeing the three, 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 which goes to that nine, which is the feminine nine. In, right. as we say, call it sun, well, as my, the ancient ascendants have shown me that the, the ancient word for it is in. And when you see in, energy, think about it, enslavement, energy slaves. Right. So you think about the mm-hmm. whole energy. So you're taking this thing with the diamonds and you're cremating them and they wearing it around their body, the energy. Right. So at the same right. time, if you continue to elevate, they trying to, they trying to, just like in daybreak, they trying to figure out a way to live. And you know what I'm saying? To accelerate because what's going on is as we awaken it, that energy is rising up. That's why you mm-hmm. see so much crazy stuff going on right now. Like up here in New Mexico, they're asking for, they want it to snow. They want rain or whatever. But like I said, that energy that you emit out, and that's the key thing. Like you said, we are that energy. And we right. have to learn to emit that out. Right. We are, we, we, we truly look, like they said, the DNA, divide, neutralize, alter. That's what that is. If you think about it, what do they use DNA for? They use it for that. In everything they do, they use it for that. But when we rise from that stage, we're no longer in that DNA form. We don't no longer produce the DNA, but we're producing E and E, energy navigating through the element, energy navigating through the universe, universe. You see what I'm saying? So when you got that and you come into your energy form, that's why you can with the food and everything, we got to rise up. And the more and more of us that rise up into that E and E stage, which is energy, is going to emit more rays, as they would say, from the sun. That's why you got so much stuff going on. So when people start awakening and learning how to navigate that energy, emit that energy out to accelerate it, then wherever you are, it does not matter. Like, for instance, if it's snowing or it's raining, whatever, over here where we're at, you know, we don't get snow. We elevate every, well, some say, med- you know, meditate, but I look at meditate as meditate. And you look at what meditate do, what meditation do. So we say elevate. We, you know, all of us get, a, get together and we elevate at 9 o'clock a.m. and 9 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. So we're elevating our energy, excelling. So that means we, even when it's snowing up here or we crazy, over in our area, it'd be like sun, as they would say. We say in, but it'd be like, it's just pretty. And up here, they'd be like, darn, okay, another pretty day, another pretty day. It's like they want chaos. And it's like they have to live in chaos. That's just how they are. But we have to learn to emit our energies out. We are energy. Yeah, That's what we are. That. Right. Uh-huh. We're light beings. No doubt about it. We're experienced light exactly. beings. No doubt about it. Right, right, So right. look at that. Look at the cremation thing because if you look at a lot of people coming up missing, you think about it. If they got that and they're cremating and wearing this on their body, you know what I'm saying? That's your essence, your queen essence and stuff. Right. They're wearing around the body, you know what I'm saying? So you, these folks are going some crazy. They even using the dog. That um, it's a commercial where it says uh, it's a commercial where they got the animals on there, the dogs and horses and stuff, and the hearts of the angel. If it's, it's, it's on, it's on my page, I have to look at it and, and call back in the next show and tell you where which one it was. But if you look at it, I don't know if you ever heard or you talked about um, oh National Humane Society. Have you ever heard of orbs and rocks and stuff like that? Y'all talk about those. Oh yeah, yeah, we no. talk about those. Uh, yes. Okay. You will okay. see going around the dog. You will see them around the dog. It looks like a fly right. at first. When you see it, you will start seeing the orbs going around the dog and and the little uh, rod because they was using a camera that had infrared, and the dog was actually like in some kind of space where it's dark, so they had to put the camera, the um, infrared camera on when it was recording. When you got an infrared camera, you can start to see the orbs in um, the little rock. Like, if you, if anybody got a camera, if you take some notice to that, you'll start to see certain stuff like that, and, they, and those things only harbor around energy. 
So that goes back into telling you about other situations, about when dogs say, when you know, when that people say dogs can see other spirits and stuff around. These are things like it's going to be going on at another higher level. Right, right. That's how I'm and that might be enough, something else to look into even more about them using it because they're doing that stuff over in China and stuff like that. And, man, this is getting ridiculous. That's why people come to miss them now because they're trying to fly. And they like, we got to we gotta be able to absorb this energy, but they can't. They can't do it. It's not even, you know, even with the little the airplanes and all that stuff, they didn't try to do that over here. And as soon as we get the elevator, guess what happens? Any shines bright, clear that shit out. Every time, mm-hmm. you have to learn to elevate your energy. We are energy navigating through the ailments, energy navigating the ailments. So if we learn to do that and rise up, but like you said, it goes back to that heart. You have to have an eternal, serene heart to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Another topic, I'm, one, I'm gone. Another topic to look into, that word love. Look deep into that word love and see the, um, the metaphors of that. That word love, what do you use love in? Now, I'm going just, to just say how the ancient messengers told me and told me to look into what made me search it. We use, in our, in our Kabael, which they say is tribe, we use eternal. That means no beginning, no end. That means it's not, it's not conditional, it don't stop, it don't end. That means my heart is eternal. We are exactly. eternal. So we don't use love. Why? How are you going to say Oh, I love you, honey. And then you in the bed, you come out from, I love you. Oh, make love to me. Then you tell your child a same word, I love you. Ain't that kind of like twisted? But we wondering why we got these old sexual and pretty sexual ill will parasites out here molesting and raping children talking about, we didn't know, I, we love them. The children love, you see that word. See, that was one of them, them spell words that in glitch, in energy glitch, that was one of the words. So we have to be careful about the words that we use. We put our own self under spells and shit, and we don't even realize it. They've been using that love thing for a long time, and that right there is a spell word. I'm being honest. I know it sounds crazy. This is some new shit, but I'm telling no, it you. Don't, it don't sound crazy. It don't sound crazy because you can see it be a spell word with a player when he's using it on the lady. You know, they yeah, could be all toe up. Yeah, they had them the two, they'd be like, I love you, then she fall right back into hypnosis. Exactly. And so what do they do? do? A, a child, child can be molested? Even a child being molested by an uncle, brother, or daddy, or whatever, and the first thing they come I love you. That word, look what's connected to it. And that's, how, like, that's why so many people are messed up in the mind, because they use that word so lightly. They throw that word out a lot, love. Really? Okay, if you look at it, what is attached to love means lust. That's what a word, that's what love is. It's just lust. So that means when you're doing that, it's, that, it's emanating that sexual, that sexual fire. So that's what the energy is going on. It's like the love of the car, the love of the money, the love of the food. You see what I'm saying? It's like, what is it? But is that eternal? No. So we have to really look at these words, even the word enemy. We don't want, we don't have enemy. Enter me. That's what that means. Enter me. That means whenever you, whatever spirit that is out there that you're dealing with or whatever spirit that other person has, and then you, you call them your enemy, that's entering you because that's energy. I mean, you remember that uh, movie, Fallen by Denzel Washington? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That right, right there is good. a fine good right. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. go ahead. That no, word, that right there is a fine good Go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. right. The whole movie is based on the fallen angel Azazel, right? Which right. has the big thing right. right. to a place. Right. And jump. You know, it's an um, each person. Mm-hmm. I just experienced a situation like that because I just had my daughter. Now, you talk about the numbers. My my admit date is seven sixteen nineteen seventy five. We got seven high children, which you know they say children. I got seven children. My the last one I just had on January the eighth. She is the seventh child. My second daughter. My equal, my Sael equal, as they will say, husband. 
his 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 admit date is five two. That's from more seven. Here it is, two thousand fourteen seven. We up at the hospital, and how about about me coming up in there? I tried to have you know the baby at home, and because we saw it like a year ago, we saw the vision a year ago of them trying to trap us in the hospital, trying to take the baby and everything, even to the point of seeing there was no baby. And then, like you say, you mm. if each of those ancestors give you these visions and you can see, you cannot stop those things from coming. If you alter it, something else could happen. You know what I'm saying? So in the midst of us trying to have the baby here, I want to enjoy at my house with my car by L, but I end up having to go anyway. So you can't stop what's going to go, even if you have the vision of discernment to see these things, you know what I'm saying, even before it happened. So we went in, in the midst of it, the baby came. This lady even tried to kill her. She was breathing. She, they put a whoop, a breathing thing on that, um, kept pumping and pumping, and basically till the rest, she was gone. And then she changed, you know what I'm saying? But as me speaking, emitting out the energy, she come back. Where in the midst of her coming back, they still try to take her. We was out in the hallway. I mean, they called the police and everything. This is no joke. They end up, at the end of it, they basically got exposed. This lady, the spirit jumped from her to the head lady, from the pediatric lady who wanted the blood. And all of this came from, I told them, they cannot have the placenta and they could not have no blood. That's when they got in an uproar. They're looking, they want the blood. Watch yourself. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's the old blood type. Yeah. That's the old blood type, in particular old negative. They definitely want that blood. I'm going to tell you something else, though. The unknown. Yep, they're looking for that old type, but it's the unknown one that they've been, they been searching for they ain't going to tell you about. They want that B. You've been talking about it right now. You've been talking about the what? Breath. They want that B right. plus now. That's the car. You see that that car is the breath. And see, they know that old oh, snap, that B is rising up. That's the breath. And now since right. that B is rising up, we no longer looking at this G-O-D word because that's a spell too. You flip that G-O-D over, you see what word that is. We have now accelerated to the ka team and ka team l ka K-H-U-T-E-N-N-E, which is ka in. Then you got the other, which is ka team l ka energy and element, which is for the seven, the man, the men. So when we are rising up into those levels and stuff, they're looking at you. They they, they want to know. Now they're curious. They're like, oh, my goodness. This is stuff they know, but they're not going to put out there. But we learn this through nature, going back to the womb. That's the key, going back to the mother womb. She going to teach you. Think about it. She was the breath, the water you want to breathe. You please do what? Her. Right there. If the women just wake up and do what they got to do, that's the beast that they scared of. See, they try to say to me, but we the creative energy. You create with that. Why do you think they're trying to get with us now? They're trying to create. And they're trying to eliminate the L, the, 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 the men, the seven, completion. See, that's like, like they said, you think about back in the days, like they said, when they took in prisoners. My fa- I'm, okay, I have to call them up because I know you got other calls on last year and I don't want to be holding up, but this, those are some things to think about. You know, remember that word, love? Look into it. Look at it, what it represents. It's a spell, man. Enemy, that's a spell. Don't use that word. Atmosphere, atmosphere. Those are spell words. God, you putting yourself right back in the same situation. Flip that word over, dog. And treating it like a dog, an animal. Cattle, chattel. Chattel. Ain't that chattel? That goes back to the Black Law Dictionary. Chattel. Money. So it's putting them back in their same situation. So when you say, in other words, kids, don't call your children kids. That's an animal. If you call your child an animal, a kid, then they say basically animals have animals and they treat you like that. Those are fair words. Mm-hmm. There's a baby those goat. Are, those, yeah, you think about Yeah, it's a goat, an animal. So when you do that, it's just like, hmm, you telling a cop or somebody in the government that you are animal and they use you as chattel. So those are, those are, those are like you said, sleeper words. Those are sleeper words that make them attack. Just like when a police came up and he talked to me, he said, ain't nobody talking to me. I said, well, what it is? He said, I'm glad to talk to you. 
you 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 different. I said, because I ain't no fear. I said, what do a dog do when he sense fear? He attacked on me. I don't have no fear. I exist without it. He said, I like you. I said, I know you do. They sense the fear. <laughs> you have no fear. It's just straight, just be real right. with it. You call it what it is. Another, these, okay, I'll call them another time. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Well, we appreciate Thank you. I'm going to I'm gonna have to have you on for a whole show. So um, <laughs> you know, make sure you inbox me. You inbox me. In, now I'm serious. Inbox me, and uh, we can have you on for a whole show dropping this info, you know. So um, right. you know, inbox me. Yeah, you can hit me up at royalhouse777 at gmail.com. That's R-O-Y-A-L-H-O-U-S-E. Uh-huh. Seven 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 at gmail dot com. So Royal House seven 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 at gmail dot com. Hit me up and we can have you on the whole show. So give me a title and we can bring you back on, okay? Okay. All right. Peace, goddess. Serene B. Peace, goddess. Peace. All right. We're gonna go back to area code three one three. Area code one three one three. Um, you got that other question that you um? That, did you remember the other one? <laughs> yeah, I was um oh I basically just wanted to ask um me and my wife when we meditate, um she we like to uh put on um some sacred frequency tones. And I was wondering do, right. does it have any um what what does it do or does it help or what what is the significance in that? Or is there any right. well, it, it, well it depends on what hurts that is resonating that the hertz has been transformed from 440, um, from 432 to 440 um, on, the, mm-hmm. on, on the average. Um, I, can, I can give you some of the, the, the specific frequencies that uh, is going on at the time. Um, I usually mm-hmm. have uh, 147, 216, uh, 285, uh, 396. Four seventeen, four thirty two. Three ninety six activates the pineal gland, and also you need five twenty eight, in which that activates the heart chakra. Yeah, yeah, I got that one too. Uh, Six thirty nine, seven forty one, eight fifty two, eight sixty four, and nine sixty three. That's my. It's, I usually have all those playing at once. And right, um, seven forty one is the heart is the um throat chakra. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. so that does aid the this, this, the the meditation. The activation of those right activation of those particular chakras. Yeah, it's the same as do re mi fa la ti do. That is right, opening right. up the um, seven chakras. Also based on the frequency of um, of the vowels. You know, I e i o a k e. You know, so right. when you do vowels, it breaks down into um, the seven chakras. You know, so yeah, it activates the seven chakras. That's no problem with you to know. Okay, that's great. I appreciate you, brother. Mm-hmm. Keep on doing what you're doing and um, have a good night. All right, All right. appreciate you, brother. All right, yeah. brother L, I think we did good tonight. I know oh, you got yeah. some closing comments. Well. What you want to talk about? Uh, yes, uh, the sister, uh, uh, yes, he was definitely, uh, Right when she talking about the spell of words, uh, they put spells and cast spells on you, uh, like love, and uh, such as peace. Uh, but but also it depends on what kind of energy you generate through those words, also. Uh, right. And she's right on time. When she's talking about the word kids, because that's a baby goat. That's right. right on time. She's talking about that. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. I like to hear her again. You know, to drop some more of that science right. on us. Well, hopefully she'll write us and um, we can get that going and um, get a show with her. And um, before she can go into full detail about it, she have a whole two hours to drop it or more. Okay. And, yep, yep. Well, we appreciate you, Brother L, for coming on, being my co-host and getting in those questions. And I'm holding right. it down for you. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt.
there's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics Of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it Proceed in others in time, order, importance The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments Earthly state of human concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.